Did you see his uh, pin, by the way? His little pin he's wearing. Where'd you get the pin from? Uh, the gas station. That wasn't even on Route 66, but I thought we were, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's like, is this Route 66? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Highway 40. Yeah. <laughs> and I learned that. Dang. Route 66, you big Cars fan? Uh, I the was. Movie, the movie Cars? Yeah. Yeah, I was a big fan, but I grew out of it. My son's big into cars. Oh, yeah. You're talking Root. about the cartoon? Yeah. Root oh, that we're talking about like American Muscle cars. No, 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 no. No, this is kid stuff. Okay. Cars, <laughs> Disney, you know. Yeah, okay. Lightning McQueen, yeah. Vader. Which is perfect because some of those areas in Utah, like Cedar area, like mm-hmm. when I drove through, I was like, this is freaking Radiator, uh, Radiatorville, whatever it's called. Radiator Springs. Radiator Get Springs. Get it right, bro. Come Sorry. On. No shit. We went through Radiator Springs. No, you, no. we got to take you somewhere else. We gotta oh, take okay. you to Utah. Well, we went to Los Alamos anyway, so that was a win. It was a weird place. Real weird. Yeah, I'm seeing all, all sorts of America. That's true. Weird place. You know Los Alamos? Uh-uh. We had to drive through Los Alamos. You know it? Oppenheimer. Oh, okay. So the, it's weird. We met a really nice dude, like super nice. The guy's name was Moss. Shout out Moss. Yeah, shout out Moss. The guy was he's awesome stud. He got a cool little dog. But we pulled up to a trailhead, and he did as well. And uh, we just started asking him questions. He was local there when he was a kid. Family, mom and dad are there. And so uh, Omar asked him, like, hey, what was it like to grow up here? He's like, weird. Just the first word he said. Weird. That's always really interesting when someone like, says I'm a, that. I'm a lab baby. My parents work in the lab. Um, you know, I was one of those babies. So we started asking him questions, and he's like, yeah, I, I don't really know exactly what my dad does, but, like, all I know is they built the Mars rover. Mars rover. They built Fat Boy and little, Fat Man, a little boy there. Yeah, the the I'm terrible. I should know this because my minor is history, but like the atomic bomb that yeah, was dropped on yeah, Japan. Yeah, Fat Boy, Fat Man, Little Boy. Yeah, but then there's a name for the atomic bomb that they tested. Oh, I know it's a Trinity, the Trinity project. Like, project, and then I can't remember the name of the bomb that they and dropped. And they dropped the bomb on the White Sands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, out there, but like Los Alamos is where they. It's it's a lab town. It's like hmm. you go through. I thought I was going through a toll road because hmm. we were driving it. We were driving through the night, which we'll get into the story. But we were driving from Omar's hunt to mine, and we had to go through Los Alamos. And I'm like, "This is a weird toll road out of nowhere." Usually, Apple Maps will tell you toll road. Yeah. And I pull up. I'm like, "What do you need?" He goes, "Just ID." I'm like, "Huh? What is this?" So I go, "It's DOE, you know." And yeah. so I show him my thing. He goes, "His first time through." I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Head straight, no camera." Don't turn left. Don't turn right. Just go straight through the nice. Go straight through the next four lights. What, what time of night is this? Midnight, like midnight. Yeah. Oh wow. So okay. and uh, he's like, yeah, just you know, a lot of security. Just don't don't look left. Don't look right. Just dead straight. Next four lights. I'm like uh, okay. <laughs> do you, uh, this do you is get weird. a police escort for this? Or what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is weird. Why are you letting me in if this is what yeah. the protocol is? And then uh, we started talking, and you know hit a ridge with some service. He wikipedia Los Alamos. <laughs> and we were ta- after talking to Moss, we're like, dude, this place is crazy. And then we got up on the ridges and we got up on a high, you could drive this highway. We got up on this ridge and glassed back down into Los Alamos. There's some wild shit out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of like airplane hangar looking things, but no airplanes. So everything's underground. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to tell you. I and don't so know if we I were think, supposed to look back, but we did. And I think that was the only highlight. Redacted. Of that we spot. just redacted that whole section. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll we'll cover up this whole section. But we glassed <laughs> back into Alamo, Los Alamos. Not sure if that's legal. And but like, there's a whole lot of like airplane hangars, but no runways, no airplanes. Weird, hmm. weird place. Dang, it's crazy. They do have a street named Oppenheimer. Really? Yeah, it's where the McDonald's was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah Oppenheimer Drive. Yeah. Or was it Boulevard? Boulevard, maybe. Cam was begging us for McDonald's, and we were like, fuck no. No. Nope. So instead, <laughs> it's, it's an American tradition, That's right? That's what he wanted to go. We're like, no, dude. So we instead, don't we eat were that allowed shit. shitty snacks from this little gas station. I wasn't allowed a cheeseburger, but I was allowed some like fake bacon crisps or something. Fake? I got, I got no man's land jerky, super clean jerky, oh. and I got cashew uh, organic nuts, clean okay. as it gets. I might have got Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, we, we should announce Cam over there. Yeah, so we'll let everyone know. We, we got Cam Henderson, right? That's the one. That's the one and only. I've had 
you know, we've had some good times the last week. You've been hanging out at the Gohan office for quite a while. Mm. Yeah, it was actually pretty unexpected to oh, turn yeah. up here. You know, the plan was to get in there, film a hunt, and then actually, yeah, I I did actually have a week to kill, so I'm glad I had somewhere to stay. Yeah, so you guys just got back from a what sounds like a pretty awesome elk hunt. Mm-hmm. Half awesome. awesome, half shit. Okay, half awesome, half shit. I like yeah. that. Is Reflecting that now, yeah. It was awesome, but half shit. Okay, are we, are we going to spoil it right off the bat of what, what happened to Omar? Or we just want to get into some crazy details on uh, maybe day by day? Because it's pretty awesome what happened to, to Omar. Yeah, well, that, that was incredible. How do you, Should we get into it? I mean, we're making a film on it. That's why Cam's here. Cam's yeah. our cameraman. Cam filmed the whole thing. We got it. We're going to film a scene today with Cam to do a, a hunt film a little different. We're okay. gonna, I'm tired of the rinse and repeat shit that we've yeah. been doing. I saw some of his footage. It was pretty crisp. It was awesome. Yeah, Cam's, Cam's a, a G. Cam's a G. I, I want to talk more about Cam. I know, I agree. I, got kind of, I saw the clips of his shorts. <laughs> yeah, I get yeah. around in those nasty deadfall timber with shorts and how scarred up his legs were. Yeah. Yeah, well, like I, I was explaining to these guys, is if you have a look at Lorenzo's legs, they're also beaten up, you know? So I think we were just all getting beaten up in that. But in why that shorts? Deadfall. They're just more comfortable. Like nothing beats when we were like lying in the sun. Yeah. And you just got the sun on your legs. You got the breeze going through your sack. Like everything gets aired <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> just straight, just straight through with the sack out there. Yeah. Uh, so oh. Do we mention he's yeah. from New Zealand? Yeah, he's from New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, and, and have you got a button for when I swear? No, you can say fuck shit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, not damn. Yeah, that's where <laughs> that's where we draw the line. <laughs> I think we made it far enough in where he can start swearing now. We're not yeah, yeah. Well, I already, I already did too. Oh, yeah. um, Swear jar. Where is it? I know. But Cam, so we, so we're gonna film this hunt, right? We, yep. Omar and I, full on go hunt original. Yep, full on go hunt original. And this was really early on. Um, Omar had the tag, and I'm like, cool. Let me see if I can get a tag in there. Couldn't. So we had to hunt two completely different tags, completely different places, but. You know, Omar had a tag in a place that I had been to mm-hmm. six years ago. Um, and I'm, and he's never killed a big game animal. Bears don't count. So don't even try to say that Whoa. you killed a big game animal. Yeah, tell it to Brady. This is a perfect debate. Remember, Bears, remember, hold, hold on. on. Hold, no. Hold. I'll let you go first. <laughs> hold on. And then let me, and let me go afterwards. I get a chance. You guys are like mainstream media. You're going to take what I just said and take it out of context. <laughs> let me give you the full what I think, the full clip of what I think. Bears start to count when, when you've... Like when you've killed an elk, a deer, okay, and those yeah, things. Yes. But like bears are a filler to a big game, right? Gosh. They're they're a big game, but yeah. they don't have antlers, they don't have horns. You know, they're a they're a filler, they're a fill-in animal. It's like a turkey. Okay. It's like a fill-in animal. It's it's like like a it does count as big game, but not until you start stacking up big game. Until you, you know what I mean? It's like it's there's a weird nuance with. What about the way that I hunt them? Just go steep and deep, and you're grinding, you're you, backpacking, you're doing it, you're doing it right, you're glassing. It's struggle every day. You would you're not. Picking off I know you, off you. I know you. You would not count a bear as your first big game animal. If That's that a would, good question. You wouldn't count that as your first big game. Yeah, it usually is antlered. You are kind of correct there, but. The way, well, I it's a this. hard hunt. Yeah, it's, it definitely is. And it's a phenomenal animal, no joke, but this is not an antlered animal. Yeah, like if, I just don't think it could qualify as so my what, what first if big game animal. So my first big game animal we talked about before, I shot a white tail when I was 14 years old with my bow. Yeah. Shot a three by two white tail buck. Yeah. Wouldn't it be more badass though if I said, hey, I was 14 years old up in my tree stand, bear came walking out and I shot a bear with my bow. No, not cool. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be school. No, I, not not for me. <laughs> to just, not for me. <laughs> to be, to, but to be able to say, like, how many people though have shot a bear as their first big game? Now? That's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah, I'm cool. not sold. I mean, yours is a 200 inch mule deer. So Mine was bad. just wild, blind luck. Okay, but, but I wanted to say though, when you said that, and yes, I'm going to take what you said out of context and make a clip that makes it seem like you hate bears. <laughs> <laughs> but but we'll remember after we that. talked about the the bear podcast, we did the two part episode. Yeah. I had convinced you that bear hunting does sound pretty fun. I agree as a filler. Okay. Totally agree. Totally agree. I just, I'm, I'm. Is it wrong for me to say that I'd probably rather bear hunt than elk hunt? Yes. It's unbelievably wrong. Okay. <laughs> wildly wrong. Write that down. <laughs> I'm not writing that down. <laughs> wildly wrong. All right. So, so anyways, yeah. Omar has never killed a big game animal until we're going on this hunt. 
Not only that, he's never drawn his bow back on a big game animal. He's been on big game hunts. He's, yeah. You hunted Colorado deer, yeah. tried to weaken warrior, all this stuff. Got close, whatever, but never drew his bow back on an animal. Yeah. So, you know, I'm like... I was thinking um, this would be awesome, you know. I'll take, I'll take hunt. yeah. I took Scotty on his. I I am in the point in my life hunting career where I genuinely enjoy taking other mm-hmm. people hunting. It's like one of my favorite things to do. Yep. And I honestly get more pumped up in those settings than I do for myself because I want it so bad for them, and it's out of my control. Mm-hmm. So it, like it makes me get more amped up, and I take it more serious and. I oh, love the it. The adrenaline and, rush of watching someone else do yeah. it is unbelievable. Yeah. And so I'm at that stage in my hunting career. So I'm like, you know what, Omar, I'll take you. So you're kind of taking, kind of taking one away from me though. What do you mean? Cause I took him in the spring for his first big game hunt <laughs> and he was successful. All right, let's, okay. We'll just quit <laughs> splitting hairs here. His first archery big there game. We go. There we go. Let's, there we go. We'll quit there splitting we go. hairs cause Bears we're going to so both awesome. agree to I feel, disagree. I feel bad for bears right now. We're going to agree to disagree this whole time. So we'll just amicably decide okay. that first archery big game first man. archery big game man. never drawn his bow back so i'm like you know what this is awesome I, I love that place i love that tag um i'll go with you so that's what we started to draw up was this plan of us going to new mexico and uh you know just him and i've been shooting bows and all this stuff and getting ready and i'm you know just every once in a while handing down little things like hey this is what you're going to want to focus on you know when mm-hmm. that animal walks in right? Like take your eye off the boat. Don't go straight into the peep site, get a full sight picture, understand your shooting lanes, then settle into your boat, kind of telling them those things yep. we're shooting on the desert. And then our cameraman falls through. We're like, shit, we got to figure that out. Yeah. Then we come across camp. We come across camp. Which the- actually started from this podcast. Yep. That really? you were doing with Luke. And yeah. I was listening to her because Luke's a good buddy of mine. And um, you guys were talking about how you struggle with cameramen. So I gave Luke a call and I was like, what are you doing for go hunt this year? And he said he was a bit booked up. And I was like, can you ask them if they've got anything available for me? Luke so, Dusenberry, what a gem. Yeah, that's the one. So how do you two kind of know each other? Um, like it, it sounds a little gay when you say it out loud, but <laughs> we've been talking online for years just um, about hunting, filming, all of those bits and pieces. Uh-huh. And then last year I just wanted to come to the States and see what it was about. So Luke said that he was hunting from like the start of September and I was like, I'll come over and join you for a couple of weeks. And that was the first time that we'd actually met person to person. And um, yeah, we just had a blast mm-hmm. and then took off back to NZ and we just carry on like usual catching up. And yeah. I think there is though, that connection though with photographers and film people on the internet, like they're all willing to help each other out, which is really cool. It's like similar a really tight knit community. Yeah. Similar to hunters. It's very, like, very similar. You meet a real hunter. Like, yep, I'm willing to help. Yeah. If what you're back you there with me at the same time, yeah, we sh- we're going to talk. We can be yeah, best friends right exactly. now because you are here and we're going to help yep, each other. Yep. And same, think the same thing in your world. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And, and what I was laughing about is the gear that us cameramen use is so different because you know, you've got millions of hunters here. You guys are always talking about the little details that you're using, but I've only got so many cameramen to talk to. So we're all still trying to figure this shit out as well. Like mm-hmm. turns out, yeah, maybe my tripod is a bit too big. And, you know, all, all, all of those small Your details. 17 pound tripod? Yeah. <laughs> is that why you left that in my house? No, I just forgot about that. Okay. But. I was like, maybe Cam's getting rid of it. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's not surprising like you spend 24 hours with Cam, it's not surprising the connection came through Luke. Yeah. Because they're cut from the same cloth. Yeah. Like from different places, wildly different places. Mm-hmm. But dude, just absolute savages when it comes to willing and able to film some crazy shit, you know? And they're cut from the same cloth. Like it, this is, it felt like we were out there with Luke again. Yeah. You know? That's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah. Sorry. That's how I came about. Yeah. So we found you and we're like, okay, wheels back in motion. I go down with a crazy emergency surgery. Yeah. So what's what's, <laughs> the, what's the timeline of you had a camera guy, you lost the camera guy, you got cam. It is this, all happened. Is this like a, a month before I your hunt? Remember. Dude, was it happened fast. Yeah. So it was tight. To oh, when you were it was tight. Leave. It was like, like, drop out, meet cam, go down, meet cam again. Okay, things are still rolling. I should be able to go on this hunt. Like, yeah, because all your stuff that happened to you. Plans were in wild flux, yeah. and uh, we made the most of it. And had a chat on on google hangout with cam and we're like cool this is this is gonna work you know he was in new zealand still 
Um, that was post uh, him hanging out with Luke, right? We had that chat on Google Hangouts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it was like pretty close to the hunt, telling him just kind of our ideas and thoughts and storylines and all this stuff. So haven't had him at Cam other than that Google Hangout. We pull into New Mexico. He's picking uh, Omar. We drove separate just because of my hunt. Well, I was thinking we wanted two separate trucks just in case. Mm -hmm. So we drove we drove separate, and uh, I drove straight through and got to the hotel, got us checked in to overnight there. Omar went and picked up Cam um, at the airport. So I still had him at Cam. So this is night before we're hitting the trailhead and going to pack in. Like 10 o'clock, I'm in my undies sleeping stuff. I'm like half asleep in bed to get a knock on the door. I'm thinking it's Omar. I open the door. It's Cam. <laughs> hey, mate. I'm like, what? What's up? <laughs> Are you still in your underwear at this point? Oh, yeah. Like okay. I was borderline asleep. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm on that, uh, I'm on that dad schedule, okay. you know? So and, I was borderline asleep. And actually, I, the reason why I was a bit chirpy was uh, I was trying to hide it, but I was actually a few beers deep because <laughs> Omar was late to the airport by an hour and a half. So oh, I went yeah. to like a wee bar. And then met like a pretty cool dude there. And then so I started having beers. And then when I came out <laughs> to the car, I was actually feeling a little wobbly. So why, <laughs> why, 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 wait, why was Omar late? <laughs> I left the office late because I'm dedicated to work. Dedicated. Okay, there we go. I just want to make that's sure a, he said the right thing there. He that's said the a right good thing. answer. And that is true. He, he got out late. But he also likes to drive five miles an hour under the speed limit. You know, <laughs> yeah. Five yeah. miles over the speed limit. No. Yes. no. Omar and, I, with the whole time. Um, Omar and I get along great because I don't like he, the speed either. Omar's a solid five under the speed limit. Kind <laughs> no. of guy. Like solid. There's no way. Just grandpa driving, two hands on the wheel at all yes. time, nine yep. and three. Yep. No. That's One hand on the wheel just like this. I was actually 85. hanging on when we were trying to keep up with Lorenzo. I'm a solid like 25 to 30 over exactly. the speed limit kind of guy. That's okay. a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we both got... Did you get a ticket? No. Me either. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so... Anyway, like that was my first in person cam yeah. as I'm like half asleep, contacts out, no glasses on. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> where do we go? I'm like, ah, here's your room key, bro. I'll see you in the morning. Like, I'm I'm toast right now. Just yeah. got done driving. I all morning with my son. I'm like, I'm I'm out. So then we wake up. By the way, the amount of crackheads. Oh man. Scary. Wait, what? Scary. In New Mexico. Bro. I Even, feel it's just, it's sad, obviously, right? Like yeah. you don't want that for anybody, and it's kind of it's kind of cold, in New Mexico, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, like there, there's just so many of them. But as a hunter, you have so much gear in your truck. That's what's always hard when you go to a hotel. You don't yeah. you don't want to leave anything in your vehicle, even in the cab. And New Mexico is one of those places where like you really don't want to leave anything. Like you're and taking like, the seatbelts and everything, dude. Like <laughs> I wanted to take the tires off my own truck, you know. <laughs> And uh, every, all the hotels, restaurants, they all have signs outside. I don't know if you guys know yeah. this, but I see them everywhere. It's like, we are not responsible for hmm. lost or stolen vehicle stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, well, truck break-ins must be a real thing here. It, dude, it is, it's crazy. They're, they're everywhere. It's uh -huh. really weird. Like, living in every bush. I was messing with one on, when we were out of the hunt, when you got us a hotel, Omar was in the shower and there was one wandering around the car park and I was like knocking on the window, closing the curtain, peeking through. So Oh, I'm sure you freaked yeah, him out. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I made the most of it. But yeah. <laughs> cool. uh, a lot of them around. Welcome man, to New Mexico. Just, Interesting you place, have huh? so much stuff in your truck. And as a hunter, like those those things you need. You, you do know need what I mean? to survive to be successful. Uh, like even yeah. a cooler. Even yeah. extra gas oh, yeah. cans. Cooler, like, you kill a bull, like we need the cooler. Yeah. We need it. And uh so it's like, it's just that uneasy feeling. So we woke up super early, drove to the trailhead just so we could get out of there. Yeah. And uh, shooting at the trailhead, hanging out, start putting our packs together. And uh, Omar and I, we'd done a bunch of work on the front end pack weight and what we're going in with just because of, you know, gear. We talked about it with trail and everybody on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, what is your guys' pack weight going into this? So hunt? Is, it, is it a full backpack hunt or are yeah, you guys coming back? Eight to days. Me? We're packed for eight days. Mm-hmm. Um, two liters of water because there's a there's a creek. What we hit it like three and a half hours into. Okay, the, yeah, so you're packing yeah. water just to get through that first yeah, part. Yeah, pack, packing waters, but from there, you know, yeah. waters. So eight eight days. What what's the weight? Two point one pounds of food per day. So I hit trail. I hit the trailhead. We had our weight scale. I hit the trailhead at fifty point two. Fifty point two. Yeah. You hit it at forty nine point eight. Wait, whoa. 
How is he less than you? Because I that's had less I water. I didn't see that. That's what, and that's, that's what, what yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Because I went way like yeah. He had no water. Uh-oh. I had Camel. three and a half. My man. Almost four pounds of water. I went with 38 ounces. And <clears throat> that was with I, no bow either. Yeah, no bow. Yeah, no bow. Just essentially, just all the pack. Yeah. Everything that was in my pack, uh, 38 ounces of water, food and everything. And then I strapped the bow onto the pack, but yeah. I never count that. So we'd been doing a lot of work on the front end and, you know, I was, I knew exactly what my pack was going to come into. I knew it was going to mm-hmm. be right at 50. And uh, I really wanted to be below 50, but I didn't want to give up on the food. Yeah. You know, I'm like, this is, I could shed that one ounce of that 2.1. I could shed, shed that 0.1 per day, but like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to redo my macros. Like, I'll just, I'll deal with the 50.2 or whatever it was. Yep. We're packing. I look at Cam's backpack and he's rocking the the big Marshall, the oh, yeah. Marshall, the, like the Mastery Rants like Marshall. Mathews, yeah. And that. Yeah, that well, thing was full. What was your pack weight? Hold, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold okay. on, hold on. Cam, what a hundred and fifty pounds soaking wet, maybe. No, I weighed myself one, <laughs> one fifty nine. I don't know if I buy that. Is that at night or morning? I'm pretty sure there was after taking a shit. That's when I usually <laughs> try to weigh myself. I mean, the guy, he's not. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Got a great build, but like he's not. Not bad. No. Not a big dude. Yeah. And I'm looking at his backpack and it's like, dude, those compression straps are fully let out. Oh, the gosh. bag is like, it's full and it is round. And I'm looking and I'm like, huh. Okay. And I'm like, in my mind, cause I've never met him before. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, dude, we, I, I've done this hunt before. So I know exactly what we're getting into. And it is physical. Mm-hmm. Like this is one of the more physical hunts you could possibly do for a lot of different reasons. Um, but just getting in and it's, it's really physical. And, uh, we put the, the scale to his pack. It was 68 pounds, right? Yeah. No, it was 33 kgs, yeah. which is just over 70 pounds, which is oh, like 72, 70 pounds. 72 pounds. Yeah. Or wow. Yeah. yeah. And you guys are rocking 50 and hold just, on, hold on. <laughs> yeah. And he puts it on and it's bigger than he is. Dude. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Cam, you want, like, we can we can carry some stuff. Are you sure? He's like, no, I'm good. And he's got a eight pound camera in his right hand. I'm like, you're not going to strap that to your pack, your shoulder, nothing. He's like, no, I'll carry it like this. He's got one trekking pole. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit, dude. Our, we're not even going to be able to film this. Like, there's no way we're making this. Yeah, like, there's no way. You're crunch a bunch of miles right yeah, now. It's like, giant there's, backpack. <laughs> there's no way. Top and heavy. He, he swore up and down. He's like, no, I'm good. No, mate, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how I'm do good, you uh, get the pack on? Do you do the old sit down turtle method, like we, roll over? Or we helped you, him out. We, we helped him, him out. Him out. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, dude, in my mind, I'm like, there's no chance this is happening. Like, we're gonna we're gonna get just a little bit in, and we're gonna have to reshuffle gear between all of our packs. To I get think all I even stuff told in. you something like you did. when we got to the top, and I was like, because he was like going behind, and I'm like watching him come up. I'm like, oh no, yeah, I don't know if he's gonna hang, and. Dude, he's got that eight pound camera in his right hand and one trekking pole. And he never said one word. I've never complained, nothing. Just right with us the whole way, all the way. And I'm like, this dude's a fucking savage. Like, is it, we're, this is going to be good. Yeah, this will be really good. Because starting off that trail, in my head, I was like, fuck, they're going to think that I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. But I've been in that position before where you're filming, it's like, Oh, well, your, your, your pack's heavy. So that's probably why I seemed a bit blasé about how much I was carrying. But I've just been in that position before where it's like, fuck, this is going to suck. Yeah. And then that first, like, half an hour, 40 minutes getting up the hill. It's straight vertical. That first half hour yeah. is straight vertical to get on the first ridge. And mm-hmm. then I am I'm actually feel like I'm dying, struggling to breathe. And, you know, like, the first hour of a walk is always the hardest until you yeah, break it, it in. Yeah. But the whole time I'm like, fuck, we just have to get a few few days deep so that they know that I can keep up. And I was just dying. And it wasn't until, like, towards the end of the trip where Lorenzo mentioned that he was also dying on that first hour or, like, struggling as well. So, yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I was feeling the pressure on that one. I was like, we just have to get a few days in mm-hmm. well, just to prove that I can make it in here and still hit record. That was that was a pretty funny little uh, back and forth with him, him and I too because, like, no matter how hard you train, I don't care how hard you train, and you know I was bouncing back from that surgery or whatever, but I still you know I still rucked a lot of I felt really good as good as I could going into it. Omar's been training like crazy the whole time, 
but you pull up to a trailhead at 9,000 feet. Yeah. It's like we we can't train for that here mm-hmm. in Vegas, it's very like hard to just, and especially that. New Zealand. Like we just can't train for that. You know what I mean? So that first, we went up, Omar and I went up that first 45 minute. Just it's just straight vertical the first mm-hmm. 45 minutes till you get on that first ridge. And we went up at first because he was filming us like going up like that takeoff from the mm-hmm. from the trailhead. So he was behind us a bit and he told us, "Yeah, I'll just catch up with you." Well, by the time he got up there, Omar and I had recovered. But what he didn't know is Omar and I are standing on the top of the ridge going, I feel like I'm dying. Like <laughs> elevation sucks. I literally feel like I'm dying. Yeah. Cam didn't get that part of the conversation. So he's just like, gosh, these guys are beasts. They're yeah. Saying yeah. Anything. Just going <laughs> yeah. Like three, that, that was exactly what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Three, three yeah. four days in, I, I, for whatever reason, we're on the, the topic and I'm like, dude, that first 45 minutes at, at elevation, I literally thought I was dying. He goes, Thank God you finally said something. I was over here thinking I'm the only one dying. I'm like, no, bro. By the time you got there, we had recovered. But like, I literally thought I was going to pass out. It's that first elevation yeah, yeah, climb, yeah. you know? It's always hard. Is, is like, this thank something, God, you know? Is this something too where you guys maybe look through some of his gear he was bringing beforehand or just trusted he has all the camera gear, he has everything else, he's good to go? Or do you like say, trusted. hey, let's just look through it to yeah, see just, if we can pull out? Well, well, in our conversations beforehand, like back home, I am doing a lot of backpack missions. Yeah. So I do genuinely know what I need to bring but since being here and seeing these guys and and even with Sam Davis and um, Wyoming is you guys get your shit really dialed Mm -hmm. I've never ever done that before I've never been like just had had a perfect layout of what I'm going to bring what it all weighs so I do sort of know what I'm doing but at the same time not really compared to you guys and how you prepare which Cam brings up a good point because we're talking about it and we're like well we only get like you know, one month, if September, if you know, if we're elk hunting and that's all we're thinking about, it's like, we only get one chance at it. So like for 11 months out of the year, we're looking at all our gear, thinking what to add, what to, you know, what to take out. He's like, well, New Zealand, we hunt all year round. So like, you know, I'm always in the mountains. I'm always training. I'm always know what my gear is. So mm-hmm. it's like, you could kind of, you kind of already know like your setup, you know, yeah, they're always ready. Yeah. They can drop anything ready. and be mountain ready. Yeah. yeah. And that's where Omar and I were getting pissed at the situation. He's like, yeah, you know, we'll wake up and if we look out the window, it's a nice day. It's like, yeah, let's go for a hunt. Like, mm-hmm. That's such <laughs> That'd bullshit. Be cool. yeah. It'd be amazing. <laughs> It'd be so awesome. This is crazy. Yeah, it's like you're bored in summer, you can go for a hunt. Bored in the winter, go for you, a hunt. You, yeah, exactly. Just just any time if it if it looks good and you want something to do, then yeah. But like on that on that gear stuff, the last thing I want to do when I get home is spend weeks researching all of my gear and equipment meanwhile during your off season you guys are like well i've got some time to kill let's yeah let's get my shit dialed so you're, yeah. you're not the person at all that like sits down weighs all your gear you just like i just know i need it i'm gonna throw it in there and it works yeah and then once i'm at the as you guys say trail here and i can't stand up on my own with the pack then i'm like i'm fucked <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so a lot of it's learning then and there but yeah. dude he, he crushed it though like and when we made it to first camp spot, immediately Omar and I are like, "Dude, this is gonna be good. Yeah. This is gonna be really good. Like mm-hmm. we, this is this is gonna play out awesome." I so mean, anticipations dude, were high. Yeah, the whole hike and, and they're getting you, excited. You we're know, you, we've all we've all had a cameraman yep. that uh, let's say is unwilling or just has something to say about what you want to do. So then you kind of you, 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 you talk process. about it on the podcast all the time, Brady about. You know, somebody just puts it in your head and then you start to question like, uh, are we, should yeah. we actually do that? Do we want to go five miles today yeah. and or stick around camp? Cam never, not one word. And I'm like, dude, this is, this is good. Yeah. Cause being in there six years ago, I, you know, it's full camp on your back every day, crushing miles, crushing deadfall, wherever you end up, you end up. And mm-hmm. it's like, you know, you just, let's go to the top. Let's go to the bottom. Let's go back to the top. And there's no elk. Let's go this. Yeah. And he never, never said one word. So, uh, dude, it was, it was great. Was we knew we were on a, on a high from then on. I was, I was, I was thinking things though. <laughs> yeah, I was, we're all thinking it to myself. Myself. That, I was thinking things too. But like, <laughs> you just don't say them. Just don't say them out loud, and then they don't exist. Yeah, when you're all on the same page on a hunt, it's that just makes best. every day so great. It's the best. And you all are physically capable. Y'all you know your talents are going to rise, and you're yeah. all going to get go out every morning like yeah if we want to go over there we're going to go over there we're going to do yeah. anything we can to go find and kill an animal yep and i did find out cam is a diesel engine because from the start he was going like the, he never stopped 
And like towards the end when I was like kind of starting to be like, this is wearing my body, Cam's like up ahead the whole time. Yeah. He, he just got goes stronger. the same speed all the time. Yeah, just like 100%. a diesel. It's yeah. it's definitely the weight thing, and I think that might be because I'm a you know, a smaller frame. When I've got weight, I'm slower than mm-hmm. usual. If I don't have weight, then I might be a bit quicker yeah. Yeah. than usual. But um because like with this whole hunt, when you guys were talking about backpacking in, I was like, Yeah, sweet, done this a lot back home. But what was different about this hunt was it was every day with that weight on. Yeah. And, like, what I took out with food, like the weight that I removed by eating some food, I was replacing with water because we found out that there wasn't really as much water around as... One of the creeks was dry and it well, really threw a wrench in mm. it. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so you, you eat a couple pounds, but then the next day I found myself carrying an extra couple pounds of water yeah. to be safe. Um, but... What I was sort of expecting going into that hunt was like we get in there and this is what we generally do back home with our backpack missions. Um, and, and it might be the same for other areas that you guys hunt, but we set up a base camp and then we do big day missions from there. And then if we locate some animals and we go back, stay the night at camp, and then it's like, all right, we're going to move to that location tomorrow. And then we travel, mm-hmm. but we still hunt without all of the weight on. Yeah. So the hardest part about this trip and the filming is just, um, yeah, having the weight on that whole time. Yeah. 70 yeah. pound pack the whole time. Yeah. Every day. Every camp. day. You're, no yeah. matter what. Yeah. And, and, and in those moments where something happens, you hear something, these boys are focused, trying to pinpoint a bugle. Like I, I want to film all of that. And I'm used to like bouncing around, you know, like I'll jump in front of them, get a shot behind, mm-hmm. but it was just so hard to move. So like that one was like one of the, this hunt was like one of the hardest balances between what I want to do creatively and then what I physically can do. Mm-hmm. And then that gets a bit hard, but yeah. 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 Not to mention the deadfall. Dude, Wolf, <laughs> we, we can get into that. Are we going to do a full recap? Just I think talk we should about do, the, yeah, the whole hunt. I'm going to do a full recap because I want to, because like the story seems so intense. So like a lot of things that, you know, that was intense on. for sure. I reckon this is going good, like going with the story, breaking apart a wee topic, carrying on with the story. Yeah, yeah. So. so we get in there We get in there first night. You, you guys have a couple days to scout? Or yeah, is it- so we're a day and a half early. Okay. So, and the, the thought process there was, you know, there, that archery season is 10 days long. Mm-hmm. We have tags in two wildly different places. Yeah. And I hadn't been in this area in six years. It's, I guess it's the seventh year now. Um, and things have changed. There's you know burns and this and that and nothing these six years seven it's years it's a long time yeah it's a long time so some I'm, of the bulls you saw before are dead a lot of them are so i'm stressed of like is it going to be the same and like i said i get so amped up on other people's hunts like i want i wanted omar to have that experience that i had in mm-hmm. there because like what a first elk hunt if that is your you know what i mean yeah. like it'll top 99 percent of the rest of the elk hunts you ever go on for the rest of your life and, you know, he had that tag, so I'm like, man, this is, like, we got to make the most of it, right? And uh, so we get in there first night, and there's a very centrally located creek. And it's, like, right in the middle of kind of working this this big burned base, and it's east to west. You're working it east to west, and you're just going up and down elevation as you're working east to west the whole time. And the central creek was dry. It was not dry when I was in there six years ago so there's a change right there yep. and that's what we find out first you know that that half day we we got to the top ridge at what we'll call it five o'clock well, yeah we, i think we're aiming for six hours and we did it like in four right four and a half four and a half yeah, yeah. we cru- yeah. we crushed it um it's no water did, and that's cam did awesome that's why we crushed it um but yeah we hit that first creek and there's no water and i'm like okay this is different and by the way, we have not heard a bugle in two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wildly different from when I was in there because the very first ridge you break over, like to get into the hunt grounds when I was there with trail, like it was, it was a symphony. The, the first ridge we broke over. So were you noticing anything else changes? Was it like vegetation changed? Was it drier? The deadfall, a lot the more deadfall? deadfall was, I, I mean, I don't know like the metric to use of how much worse the deadfall was, but like it was, five times worse. Oh, wow. I mean, it, it was, yeah. it was unbelievably bad, unbelievably bad compared to when I was in there. Like when I was in there, it was still manageable to 
to hike and not have to log walk. Like it was manageable for sure. Mm-hmm. This time it you could not not log walk. Like it was impossible. And it took so long to go a quarter of a mile. I mean, it took hours to go a quarter of a mile. Did your thought process switch to like, it could be a benefit in a way oh, because yeah. of, cause, cause of hunting no, pressure? N- not It's going to keep people away? Not, not yet. Okay. So I was, I was in a dark place that, those first couple hours because I'm the one, right? It's like, it's kind of on my shoulders. I took responsibility yeah, you're sending for people it. In. And I, it was a spot that I had been, right? It's yeah. a trail spot that was passed to me and checked with trail. Trail's like, yep, cool. I have no problem. You taking him in there so now i'm passing the spot to omar and it's like you know i took the reins on you have this tag hey i have this spot and i'll take you Mm -hmm. and uh and so i'm back there and i'm like okay creek's dry no one is back here when i was back there with trail there was a outfitter camp with horses we ran into another hunter on foot and it's like seeing other hunters it's there's it's a two-way street right especially an outfitter it's a two-way street it's a good spot, right? Like there's animals in the area. It's kind of a, it's kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, I would love to be by myself, but this obviously is a good spot. There's elk in here. That's why people are here. And it turned out with trail that that was the case. I go, we go there with Omar and there is not a horse trailer at the trailhead, not a single horse trailer at the trailhead. There's no horse tracks on the trail. Mm -hmm. There's no footprints, no other hunting trucks, nothing. And I'm like, that would take you to a dark place. Like maybe this unit did change. Yeah, you there's know? no elk anymore. New burn, design. new burn, deadfall's terrible, creek's dry. And I'm like, oh boy, like this, we could be in for it, you know? And uh, that night we found a spring. Thank God we found a spring. And kind of doing a little bit of walking, found just a little trickle of a, of a spring. And we're like, yeah, let's just, we'll go here. It, we'll sleep here tonight. At least there's water right here since that last creek was dry. And we don't have to walk a mile and a half back to the last one we just crossed. Because there's no bugles anyway. So, like, at least we're getting deeper in. We'll sleep right here on this spring. And then, um, I don't can't remember why we decided, but, like, let's drop lower. Let's just drop a little bit lower to look down off this shelf. On remember? the That very first, first night. I don't know why we went lower, but we did. And then we finally started hearing bugles. Well, yeah, we, we went lower because we wanted to get to water. Remember? That's and we were like, that's, let's go over there. There's water over there. Yeah. And then we passed that spring. And then I was like, hey, man, it's getting late. Let's just, like, do let's just go to spring. We're hearing bugles. We know they're there. Like yeah. mission accomplished. You know, you're like mission accomplished. We yeah, let's go back to that bugle. spring. And then we have fresh water. We'll camp there. Yep. And then we'll do a new game plan. Tomorrow. Exactly. So <clears> that was that first. And we heard bugles like way below us. And I'm like, OK, well, at least there's some elk in here. Definitely not what it was with Trail and I, but at least there's some elk in here. I'm like, tomorrow we're going to wake up early and we're going to go straight vertical all mm-hmm. the way to the top, basically. There's two wallows up there that Trail and I came across, and it was good. It was really good. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what we're doing. We'll go look for elk up there. Maybe the there's a herd of elk up there. We hike and hike and hike and hike, and it took way longer than expected. We get no there, bugles in the no bugles the entire way up, Silent. and I'm like going into a dark place again. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> this is the morning. Yeah, morning. The morning too. hike, and we get there at like noon, um, and I'm like, let's just sit on the wallow till three, and if we don't hear or see anything, I guess we're dropping all the way low to where we heard those bugles last night, which low is in the live timber, and I remember being in there with trail. And it's just not as fun. You know what I mean? It's not the experience. So I'm like, Mm -hmm. man, if that's what we're doing, I guess that's what we're doing. More of a Colorado style, like dark timber type of hunt. I'm like, man, I don't want to go down there. That's why we decided to go to the top, check those wallows. There wasn't shit. There wasn't tracks. There was nothing. There was no fresh sign. (laughs) We just took a nap. (laughs) We we took a nap and we ate some food. And I'm sure Cam's wondering, like, what the hell am I even here for? What are we going to film? Like, it's just a bunch of dead trees. You're just hiking with heavy packs. Just hiking with heavy packs <laughs> for no no reason. Took a nap, ate some food, and then I'm like, you know what? Hunt starts tomorrow. We're bombing to the bottom. Like, it is what it is. That's where we located some bugles. We're bombing mm-hmm. to the bottom. So, back up. Let's go. Yeah. So That's two, mentally defeating right there. So defeating. And I, those were, like, such good wallows when I was – they were mm-hmm. so fun to hunt. And we just had, we had so much action there and bulls coming in and satellite bulls calling in. And it was, you know, I'm like, okay, well, mark that off the list. One of the spots, well, the, the main spot. And as we're hiking down off the bottom, 
or hiking down towards the bottom, um, a mile and a half up from the bottom is we hear a bugle. Mm -hmm. And I turned to, to Omar and I'm like, do you hear that? He's like, yeah. I start pumping my fist. I'm like, yes, there's elk. <laughs> yes, like there is some up here in the burn. And uh, we sit down just to listen because I was trying to go down off that way to get to water. And that bugle was coming from kind of right where we needed to go. So I sat down just to game, game plan. Like, what do you guys think? I think we're going to have to backtrack so we don't bump this bull. We'll have to go below him. Is the bull and like potentially in some north facing timber? Like, what's the kind of topography he, the bull might he be would, in? He would be so the burn south fa is south facing, and he was in a a live timber patch that faces to the west. Okay, so yeah. a, a, a more moisture, deep, deep yeah. canyon, live timber, west facing slope, yep. um, and there was water at the bottom of it that we were trying to get to. And I'm like, yeah, we got to circle all the way around him. Well, as we're sitting there game planning, Cam goes, "There's a bull right there." And another bull that was not bugling comes out. Big bull, S seven point on the left side. Yeah, he's a cool bull. just walking, just close walking. feeding, yeah. just feeding. Yeah, you guys just feeding. wasn't bugling. You didn't spook somehow. No, no, wasn't feeding. You guys never called at this point. No, I didn't want to call. Yeah, I, 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 the whole, the whole mission was get in there early, locate the herd. Yeah, do some reconnaissance. Stay work. off of the herd. Just yeah. follow them. So opening morning, we're on them. Mm -hmm. Like because. You know, those elk herds, when they rut like that, they travel a lot. They're always traveling. That's why you have full camp on your back all the time. So you just, wherever they end up, you end up. And uh, it was all about, like, we're just going to stay a 1,000 yards off the herd and so we can push in in the morning. That's that's all mm -hmm. the mission was, Those first day, that first day and a half. Well, this bull comes out, and he's like 120 yards maybe. Wait, what? Yeah, like <laughs> right below us. The, the bugle we're hearing was... 500 yards yeah, way further down way further bottom. like not even a we weren't worried uh -huh. at all all we had to do was backtrack get below him whatever and this bull comes at cam cameraman like there's a bull i'm like wait what he goes yeah he's coming out right here he's like i saw horns on him. it's it's got at least a split i think he said right a split or like i like it yeah what well, no I, I when i first saw him he was head on and i mentioned that he was maybe a smaller bull oh yeah yeah, yeah. then that's what it looked like front on yeah and when he jumped the log to come out and feed, I saw him from the side profile and I saw his left horn and it's a seven point oh, and a geez. very well put together seven point. And I'm like, that's a big bull. <laughs> and then I immediately look at Omar and I go, do not let this affect your thoughts of this hunt. Like don't, we're hunting six points in here. That's what's fun about this hunt. Mm -hmm. Like do not let that affect your, your uh, decision making. And he's like, oh. You can tell it. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it. So he lays down and <laughs> just starts looking oh up God. at the sky. <laughs> Laid on my back. and Because I, I looked at it for a little bit. And, I mean, it's the day before opener. Like, it's just killing me knowing that bull's in there. Mm -hmm. And I just lay on my back. I'm, like, I'm not going to look at it. I just it's lay like on my back. Hours. It's what, like what, what, 12 what? hours before opener. But when's the last time you laid the eyes on an elk? September last year. September of last and year. And I didn't even have the elk tag. I had a deer tag. Yeah, you just saw some bulls. but Yeah. So just like your heart start racing even though you know you can't kill him right now because it's not season's not yet but you just like get excited so i mean you, I, it you was get, just, you get yourself amped up oh yeah i it was just cool to see a bull like that close and like that was like we surpassed our mission that day was we got really close to a bull we failed the mission we yeah, got we, too close yeah, like on those old Gantha, i don't know if you played Gantha thought of back in the day but of course i did you know those missions where you have to like spy on them yeah we got too close and we got busted Wait, what were we talking but about he never busted Grand Theft Auto. It's a video game. You want to get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get it. I played it for a different reason. Um, which, if you know, you know. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. But Omar is like, I'm not going to look at it. That's the biggest bull I've ever seen. I'm like, dude, don't look at it. Because yeah. we're seeing side profile, and side profile, this bull is just beautiful. And then he starts feeding towards us. And I'm like, okay, we're about to really fail the mission. We got great wind. Everything, everything's fine. We're, we're not skylined. We're tucked up in the sitting down. We got nothing to worry about. We just can't have this bull work to mm -hmm. us because I don't want him to take whatever's below him. If that bull's got cows or whatever, I don't want him to take that herd because that's mm -hmm. what we're hunting in the morning is that herd right there. They're in the burn. That's what I want to hunt. That's what's fun yeah. is because you can see him. You can work on him, all this stuff. You know, that experience that I was planning for in my head that I wanted for Omar. I'm like, okay, this, this bull down there bugling, that's, that's what we're going to get. Like mm -hmm. that's that experience where yeah. you call him out of the live timber into the burn. Mm -hmm. So fun. And, uh, 
this thing starts walking towards us and he has no cows. And so I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, okay, how can I put a stop to this? Like he cannot keep feeding this way. We have the wind. I mean, this thing's going to walk right on top of us if I don't try something. Like challenge bugle. He's a young bull. He's got no cows. I'm going to scream as loud as I can, challenge bugle in his face, the chuckle, everything, and get him to be like, oh, shit, I don't want to go get my ass kicked. <laughs> so I challenge bugle right in his face, 100 yards away from us. He lifts his head up, challenge bugles right back, oh, and starts walking towards us. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Fail, huge fail. Like, I don't know what to do. Huge fail. I'm not, I'm not calling again. I'm not cow calling. Like this thing needs to get into the timber immediately. Well, that didn't work. And, uh, we had such good wind and everything. So I failed, failed that whole mission. And so I, we basically just turned it into a learning yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. I just kind of used it as a learning moment for Omar. Cause the, I messed up. I shouldn't have called, first of all. Who knows what would happen if I didn't call. But yeah, exactly. You don't know. I, was, I was trying to get him to turn back, to go back in so we could back out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I was trying to get him to go into the live timber so he couldn't see us, so we could get back up and over the ridge and then drop down below these bulls yeah. and not spook them. Yeah, because the worst thing is that bull sees you, that bull wins you, and that bull runs down to the takes other. Takes the herd and gone. Everything's gone. Yep. You just and the whole area. And we were hunting those bulls in the morning. Like yeah. we knew, yep, this is the bull. He's bugling like crazy. He must have cows. That's We're hunting that herd. There's got to be a satellite in there. Yeah. Shit, that six by seven was a satellite. Yeah. So I'm like, that's the herd. The only thing I can think of is what if you grab like a rock and try to chuck it off to the yeah. side, act like there's an elk walking or something like that, make some noise that way, like distract yeah. him a little bit. And then like sneak out. Dude, when he challenged Bugle back, I froze. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. This is, he's walking he's right at us and he's now. pissed. Yeah. He's, he's pissed. I, I bugled like I was pissed. He's pissed. Like everyone just lay down. Don't move. And uh, he like, this is where I realized that the deadfall was a huge advantage. Mm. Is the deadfall was so bad. It, it is keeping people out of there, mm. you know, especially horses. And these bulls, they can't maneuver like they want to you know uh, a good bull is always a smart bull is always going to try to circle you wind you before they work in but there's so much deadfall they can't like mm. they just keep getting held up and then they'll like spin and do like a, a horse drum what's that called dressage or whatever where the horses jump the fences is that show, still a thing? Show jumping. i don't know but the, dude these bulls are like legs tucked like torpedo jumping over yeah. these deadfall pieces dude. that they can but they can't maneuver fully right mm -hmm. so they're kind of like they're caught just the same way as you're yeah, caught. They're wasting so much extra effort yeah to and so they're it. not these bulls aren't like trying to spin us and wind us you know mm -hmm. and uh anyways he's we used it as a learning moment because then finally i'm like this bull's not going anywhere and we have perfect wind whatever we got good sunlight you know sun's at our back and uh well right over the top of us i wasn't worried about us shining or any of that stuff so mm -hmm. i i told omar i'm like hey listen let's watch this bull I'm like, see how he's walking right here? I'm like, see this green bush? When his head goes behind that green bush, that's when you draw. And I'm like, okay, so let's watch him. So he'd get behind and go, okay, you draw. And then when he comes out on the other side, mew, I'd you know, do that to stop him. And I'm like, that's when you would shoot. So you're taking that now as like a practice learning yeah, session. Yeah. You're visually just kind of talking to each other, going through this. Yep. And I think that was good for Oh, us. 100%. It was like, I think it's always good to like get close to animals, even though we couldn't actually like shoot them. But like I learned so much just from like, seeing like his behavior like mm -hmm. seeing how he behaved and then coming and then you being like because you were kind of like behind me and you're like all right you like that you know when he puts his head down when he's behind something you draw you don't and then you said you don't want to draw like when he's wide in the open or else he's going to no. catch that yeah. mm -hmm. and then you know we'll, he'll come out you, you're already drawn back we'll mew and then that's like he'll stop. You, know, you set out the pin and even yeah, shoot. E even learning how they react <laughs> with just their sight you know, yeah. with not being able to smell you, you can actually see how much you get away with. Mm -hmm. You know, when they spot you, they look at you. If you were hunting, it's like, fuck, I better let an arrow fly. Now, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but then when it's in a situation like that, then you see him put his head back down, take a bite of something, come in a bit closer, look at you. Like, you learn so much from being that close to an animal yeah. when you aren't planning to kill. Yep. And those elk are so pure because they're so hard to get to. Like they're, they act and behave so pure because they're not messed with every day. So it's like, you know, they, they're not those silent ninja bulls. They're not those like on high alert all the time bulls. Like, you know, a lot of the areas you, you get used to because people just drive their trucks in in September want to go listen to them and call them even though they don't have a tag, anything yeah, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. 
we all know areas like that. But that's, that's, that's probably like the first human interaction. Oh, you really didn't spook the bull or anything, but like the bull hasn't seen anyone in a long time. That's that's my thought, and I'm yeah. like, okay, this bull, and the wind was could not have been better, like a stiff wind right in our face. And so we just used it as like a okay, here's another good opportunity. He's feeding. You could draw right now, yeah. right? Like, and then, okay, he's at 55 yards and you see the angle he's walking on. When he comes out here, he's going to be like 45 and I'm going to be over your shoulder and I'm going to range him. So like it gave us a practice yeah. where him and I kind of got on the same page. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's good. So it ended up being really good. Yeah. Um, and then we, he, well, he got to 35 yards and he was kind of like My barking gosh, and slobbering. And, <laughs> and so he pulled out his phone. I'm like, yeah, there's nothing we can do now and pulled out his phone. We started videoing him. And then finally he's like, eh, I don't like it. And he didn't bust. He just kind of turned, went back into the timber. I'm like, oh, thank God. Not only did he not bust, like he's still right here mm-hmm. for the morning. And we, you know, go back to our plan. We back out. We get down below these elk and set up camp. Took a, it, it had been very physical. The hike in, the hike up to the wallows and the deadfall, the hike down. Then with this bull, I'm like, you know what, we're going to take the these last three hours of light. Like, we have the herd we're going to hunt tomorrow. Let's just, we're just going to go chill, kick yeah. our feet up at the creek. Didn't you get in the creek that yeah. night? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? You guys are doing some backcountry? Uh, no, not bats. you guys. Yeah, not him. Him. Yeah, okay. not you guys. <laughs> yeah, that was worth it. Well, especially because we had, you kind of glanced over, but we had a mission to go down that mountain. Mission. The deadfall and everything. That was a mission. Yeah. I remember looking at Cam, and I waited for him, because or else he would have lost us. So I waited for Cam, and he shows up, and your pants were, like, pulled, like... Hanging down, hanging like, down. crack showing. It, it was a serious workout, and, like, <laughs> even to start off with, when I get a clip of these guys walking by, generally it takes me about 20 seconds to get a clip of someone walking away, because, you know, you fluff around five seconds pulling your camera out, and then I try to hit record for at least 10 seconds... And then as soon as I'm behind, then I'm not taking the same route as them. So I try to take a shortcut. I get caught up in shit while they're going good, and then they get caught up in shit while I'm going good. So I was separated from you guys for a lot of it. Yeah. And that was, yeah, I think when I'm on my own going through Deadfall and these guys like 100 yards away, you're just like, fuck. We had, we <laughs> had 1.1 miles to looking up on my maps, pull it up, as a crow flies as to... As a dove flies is what we came up with. <laughs> I said, what, wait. It was, it was really funny. As we came fly. up with, because the deadfall was so bad and oh. you couldn't go in a straight line, we were all crow. talking about like as crow flies, as and I'm like, dude, this is like as a dove flies. <laughs> Those things are changing directions every five seconds. That's yeah. what we are. Like you want to go this way, but then you got to go left and then right and then up and then back and then down and then to go one direction. Like this is <laughs> 1.1 miles as a dove flies. You know how they're always yeah, dipping and changing? Yeah. So anyways, that's what we came up with was... All of our metrics back there were as a dove flies. So we had 1.1 miles to go, and it took us two and a half hours it was downhill. Oh, I remember some of those places I've been to before. Downhill, 1.1, yeah. 1. 1, took us like two and a half hours. Those are those times, too, where it's almost more mentally draining than physical because you realize, too, every step is dangerous. Yeah. Always dangerous. Like, you slip in that stuff, it ain't going to be good. And honey hasn't even started yet. Yeah. And it's... And it's all that, all that timber that's got like those spikes on them. Oh, that was stick straight up, yeah. right over your. Uh, yep. There's parts. so yep. many ways to hurt yourself in that shit. Oh yeah. Like you know, getting a stick up the ass if you slip on a log, even even when you put your leg between two, you're worried about falling forward and yeah. snapping yeah. your leg. When you have to climb up onto some bigger logs <laughs> and then you have to jump down with fifty or seventy pounds on your back, yeah. hoping the ankles don't give out. Do you guys see any fresh trees falling in that? Burn when you go through it? No, no. Thankfully. We Omar didn't do a very good job that first night of looking for widow makers. I tucked <laughs> right in between these. Yeah, 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 that's a good learning experience. Dude, to I figure tucked, out where to I camp tucked in that right stuff, in between these dangerous. two dead ones. I was safe as could be. We woke up in the morning and we saw where Omar was sleeping. We're like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah well, let's take well, a second I, here. I've never heard of a widow maker before until you guys said it. And I kept it to myself, but they're like, Oh, fuck. Well, that's something else to look out for now. Yeah. 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 And you got where you got, because I didn't pay attention because it started raining. I yeah. left that out too. That first night we slept on the spring, thunderstorm. started raining, big thunderstorm. So we just kind of like tucked in hurry. And that's why I like Bivy set up is I, I got tucked right underneath these two, these two already dead fallen logs. Like, dude, I was covered no matter which way mm-hmm. one of those Widowmaker, Widowmakers fell. 
and I wasn't paying attention to them because it was we were getting soaked. And so I wake up the next morning and we're letting the sun come up a little bit to dry out our gear. And Omar's like looking around and he looks at me and goes, I probably wasn't a good place to camp. <laughs> I'm like, no, bro, look at all, all these dead trees are uphill from you are all falling that way. Down. And so, it was windy from the from that storm, and so that was a good lear- yeah. learning moment. And some of the some of the closest lightning I've been to. Yeah, that was the like, couple of those. One of those close. strikes was seriously bright, and the thunder was right on top of it. Yeah, maybe even closest coyote you ever got to, also. But you never heard it, which I was amazed because that thing was loud. I was sleeping. <laughs> He's a hard <laughs> sleeper. He's like you. He's a hard sleeper. Just goes. So anyway, sorry, we backtracked to the first night, but we'll fast forward back to the second night. Now we get to the, the creek, um, and we're like, yeah, let's just take this opportunity to rest. Like, we just beat the shit out of ourselves, and tomorrow we need to be fresh for hunting. So, you know, supplements and food and water and soaking feet, and he jumps fully into a full ice bath, which it was cold. I, I, I just dipped myself into, like, above my belly button, and I think I only did three and a half minutes in it like so this is like nature's cold cold plunge yeah yeah, yeah well I, I do it on the odd hunt like before i came here we were doing it in glacial water on mm-hmm. like a far colder night but um yeah i don't know i, I think it always helps mm-hmm. like it, it genuinely feels good and i was telling these guys like don't you come take a peek even though i assume that they wouldn't because <laughs> like I'm, I'm butt naked in there you know oh really yeah and then that's where i learned about warrior dick <laughs> <laughs> and it makes me feel so much better. Yeah, like the next the time old warrior that. dick. That's when it. That's when it turns into a second belly button. Because in New Zealand, like a couple of weeks beforehand, like it's colder or well, it's coming in spring, and I did it with a buddy, and so we jump in there again up to our belly buttons, and I'm covering my package, and it's it's dark. We got headlamps on. I look over at him, and you know he's he's got his belly button, you know, his second belly button showing. And I was like, <laughs> I've oh, okay, heard well. call this. <laughs> Second belly button, man. Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, I, I think I learned that from Omar as well. And then I was like, well, i got nothing to hide then, so let it go. Yeah. But yeah. So, and, and dude, it's cold. Like, it was way colder than when I was with Trail again six years ago. Like, ice on your sleeping bag on the yeah. foot box every morning. It was cold, and he jumped mm-hmm. right in that creek. I There's no doubt I'm a big believer in them like helping recovery mm-hmm. man i'm a desert rat and it was already plenty cold and i wasn't getting any more cold you know what i mean yeah, and yeah. this crazy bastard just jumps into it so anyways we sitting there that <laughs> night and as we're falling asleep i hear that bugle and it's just that validation of like oh yes they're still there still there that bull he how didn't far away do you think they were they were 800 yards Probably. as a dove flies yeah. what, what, what are you what camp? are your thoughts on camping in a herd that's that's fairly close Thousand yards would be my what I would prefer. Your window, yeah. Thousand yards, like Bibby hunting, and I learned that from Trail. Trail's the the king of yeah. Elk you got to pay attention to where the thermals are going. Exactly. At night. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and Trail's the king of this. I learned all this from Trail when I was back there. You know, you want that buffer. You don't want to be right mm-hmm. on them, but yeah. you you want that buffer where you can hear them, right? Just very faintly hear them, but you're not going to disturb anything, and it'll allow you to pull camp and start working in on them, right? Yeah. Um. But those are those like woodsman type skills that only come with experience. And that's 100%. what's cool about passing it right on to Omar again. Yeah. It's like you might glaze over it and you've under you've heard it before being talked about, but until you're in that situation to realize, all right, we're camping here for a reason and you can feel the thermals and you know what's doing. Yep. Like you want to know, okay, the elk over here, they're not gonna wind us. We're close mm-hmm. enough to attack in the morning, yeah, but far enough away where it's safe. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. really important. Exactly. And that, and yeah, trail pass that along to me of like and then you want to camp in those creek bottoms because the thermals are going down all night, yep. all morning. So you're pulling, you're cooking food, you're yep. doing this, you're doing that. You're and you don't want to do it until the sun starts going down. That's when we started cooking food and stuff. Just mm-hmm. make sure those yep. thermals are going down. Wake up in the morning, pull camp. Yep. All the everything's going down. In the it's negative like, of all those areas, is it always really cold too? And you always got moisture way and everything. Colder. Moisture. Way yeah. colder right there. But next it's a to smart it. thing to do. You don't think it is at the time, but it's a smart thing it's, to do. It's the safest. You, you're guaranteed to know what the thermals are doing and what your what your scent is doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Trail taught that to me. That's what we were doing. I'm like, this is, you know, we're 800 yards. It's a little closer, but like, you know, 200 yards, the deadfall, whatever. Like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. just what we're doing. What, what's your guys' sleep setup? You said you're bibbing. Bibby sack. Bibby with a tarp when it rains. Okay. So light, super fast and easy. You can, super light, super fast. Did you notice how quick his setup is to, to throw around? He can be sleeping in minutes. 
Yeah, no, he rubbed it in my face every night. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And I, and I took the opportunity to rub it in his face every night. So would you ever change your setup maybe to something like that for an elk hunt? I told him if, like, you know, if we're doing, like, the style hunt again ever, like, I'll, I'm changing my setup. Yeah. Because, like, you know, you're tired every single night. And Lorenzo was, like, telling me before we even left, like, you're going to want to do a bivy and a tarp. And he's like, I'm going to try out this new this system here that I want to try out. I use a Stone Glacier uh, Sky ULT. Yeah. Which I think is a phenomenal system. It's still a small footprint, which is nice. But yeah. you realize too, like some of those places, it's hard to find a spot for for a tent. Yeah, it's just setup time. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. that's all it is. Yeah. Like for me, you know, that tarp, I can just throw it over a log and a tree and tie it off, and I don't need. It's like the setup time is so fast, even when it rains, and I have to set up the tarp over me. Because one thing for a bibby with me is I'm not going to sleep in it while it's raining, fully zipped up, everything. Mm-hmm. That's just. I'm a little claustrophobic. It's just not worth yeah. it. And the tarp has so many different purposes. So it's not like I'm carrying it only for that. Yeah. And it's just kind of a secondary use for the rain. And it's roomy. And it's roomy as hell. Yeah. And it's so easy to just like tie it off on a tree in a bush and a trekking pole and done. Right. Like he's over there staking them out, guying <laughs> out the lines, doing this, connecting yeah. all the pieces. And it's like, it's just not worth it. And those, those style of hunts. Did yeah. you take a shelter, like a tent? Yeah. I, I, I had a um, MSR Hubba Hubba. Oh yeah, classic. Then this was called Hubba Hubba. Yep. Yeah, Hubba Hubba. Yeah, too. and so like, there's always differences, obviously, between when I'm hunting personally and then filming. When that rain came in the first night, I was actually grateful to have a tent because you do need spare space for the camera gear. Like that stuff's a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. So yeah, although the fly was like the perfect setup for in there, tarp. Sorry, um, yeah, the tent, the tent still sort of worked. Just mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and I had to bring his, because, you know, he's coming from New Zealand. So he was like, can you bring, like, a sleeping setup and stuff for me? And I need, I'm going to need a backpack and food. Um, so I was, you know, I asked Campos, good old King Campos, uh, I need a tent for him. And he gave me the hubba hubba. And it was already, like, the last day. I was like, shoot, I'm going to have to bite the bullet. Hopefully this doesn't come back and bite me in the in the rear where he's, like, mad that I didn't get, like, something more, like a... Uh, a tarp or something, but yeah, the hubba hubba worked out perfect for him. Yeah, yeah. So it worked. It worked good enough. Yeah, plenty good enough. Yeah. Um, it's just the time thing, you yeah, know. The time. I was big. just not for any purpose that I'm better or worse, but like I was just smoking them on setting up and yeah. collecting camp. It's just that's how much faster that that which style then, is. Which when then you means you, you can rest more. You can kick exactly. off your boots. Exactly. You can kick back. You can maybe go to sleep earlier. Like. And I'm not as stressed to like find a spot yeah. in this. Any I can spot just works. tuck against a log and be done. Yeah. Um, so anyways, we're sleeping that night. Hear that bugle. What I'm time like, did that bull bugle? 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock. What time did it get dark? 9.30 probably. Yeah, 9.30. 9 yeah. It was dark, pitch black. Okay. Yeah. But I'm like, Omar, did you hear that? He's like, yeah, I heard it. I'm like, Get ready, man. <laughs> you know, like yeah. one, it's just one of those validated, yeah, yeah. like good feels. Anyways, we go to sleep, wake up. Well, do you remember? <laughs> do you remember like uh, you're like you hear that one? And I was like, on a couple hours, like I said, yeah, but I was watching Netflix. <laughs> 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 oh, I forgot. Yeah, I go. Did you hear that one? That one was kind of closer. Like that was. I don't. know, Hopefully, they go the other way. And he goes, Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> Come to find out the next morning, he didn't hear shit. He was watching Netflix. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, bro. He was <laughs> like, getting mentally prepared. Yeah. But we're, we're, I said, okay, we're going to wake up early because we just, you know, that the night before, I remember I was telling you to, to go downhill, it took us that long. And I'm like, all right, we got to go a thousand yards uphill. Let's wake up super early. I want to get at least halfway in the dark. And uh, then we'll start slowing down and kind of picking the area apart and working on these bulls. So I'm like, let's wake up at five, give us an hour and 15 in the dark. Yeah. And, uh, do we wake up, pull camp, pack it away, meeting breakfast, drinking my first um, apex quench in the morning, getting all set up, bugle right away. Mm. And I'm like, oh shit, oh boy, they're talking. It's game time. And I'm like, dude, you better, you better be ready. He looks at me, he goes, I feel ice cold right now. I'm like, <laughs> perfect. Got ice in the veins. <laughs> which I felt like, uh, never really. I played sports in middle school, which doesn't really count. I feel like if you don't, if you play sports in high school, that counts. But like it felt like I was getting ready for like, you know, opener against a big team, and mm-hmm. I was like the star quarterback. That's kind of how it felt. Yeah, and it was cool to like kind of like I was calming the nerves down, and then yeah, Lorenzo was like, "How do you feel?" I was like, "I feel ice cold. Like, whatever's coming close, I'm smoking it." Which kind of what I'm telling myself to not yeah. freak out. So going on that side of it though, did you f- feel any pressure opening day? Because Lorenzo's tag is not valid in this unit, so you're 
it's only you hunting right now. Yeah. Like everything's on you. Dude. It, yeah. That's a good point. And logistically I told him, I said, listen, we can't do a horse pack if you do kill because you're going to burn a day with the horseman getting ready, burn a day with the horseman coming in and then a half a day packing out. I got, we, we have to go clear to the other side. So we're hoofing this thing out and we're driving to my unit that same night through the night, no matter what. So we mm-hmm. only lose a day. Yeah. Instead of two and a half, we're only going to lose a day and that'll give me I was planning on my hunt being three days. Like, I'll give you six days. I want three days losing the day of, of logistic, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And his hunt was a priority. I'd been there before. I know it's a great hunt. I'm like, that's what it is. So yeah. you did feel a little bit yeah. of like. So and we've talked about pressure on some other podcasts mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and it's a, it's a thing. And even with the filming, like, I've been with experienced hunters that have killed 100 times, but they get nervous oh, yeah. when there's a camera on them as well. Yeah. So I think that's a whole nother element to nail. But you were kind of acting perfect with the camera where you didn't really give a shit about what I was doing. Then that's how it felt. Like you were just focusing on hunting with Lorenzo. And that was perfect. That's good. Yeah, because yeah, that's your first like full filmed hunt. Like the hunt that we did together, we just self-filmed. You yeah. and I had the camera and just passing it back. Mm. Do you think it helped all the stuff you we put you into and go hunt the last like year and a half of like filming around the office, getting comfortable in front of a camera? Like yeah. understanding that the camera is really nothing. It's just another person you're having a conversation. Like, yeah, hundred hundred percent. Like, you know, being kind of in front, like in front of the camera, if you will, and like, you know, talking to the camera. And then also, like, Cam was just like, at, you know, we had only known him for like two days at this point, but like, he was just like the like best person to be around. And He's like, one of us immediately. Yeah, yeah, one of us immediately. Like, you know, you're back there. We're joking around. Like, we're being like, we're joking around. We're being serious. We're trying to survive. But like, he was just like the best person. You know, and my first experience to like being with a cameraman in the backcountry, and I just hope like they're all that great because th- I mean he was solid. And they're like, not. <laughs> and we like I'm one just being honest. One thing that not. I picked up like early on Cam was like you know we would have like some conversations, and you know not that I've been on film hunts before, but like I feel like a lot of cameramen would just like oh damn miss that opportunity. But he's like he will rewind you and you know ask like hey can you like. You yeah. know, talk about what you just said to, a, to the camera. To a certain degree, like yeah, some stuff does pass by and I'm not going to fuck around the whole time trying to mm-hmm. bring shit back. But um, I, I actually mentioned to – because I, I was going slower than these boys pretty much the whole time and I was falling behind. These guys did have to wait for me. So I told Omar, I was like, I really hope that you get out with like a shittier cameraman so that <laughs> you can see that, <laughs> that I'm not that bad. Like this is his first experience and I was falling behind 50, 100 yards. So, yeah. This is, I mean, that was understandable there, though. Guy's got one trekking pole and an eight-pound camera in one <laughs> hand and a 70-pound pack. I got two trekking poles and a 50-pound pack. Like, yeah. pretty understandable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, back, but, to, back to slipping on logs that morning? Dude. Back to slipping on logs, yeah. Really, really scary, honestly. So, it was... I didn't realize how humid the air was, but it was it was really humid. Um and that morning, like I said, it was cold in the mornings. There'd be ice on your foot box. But like in my mind, you know, that's condensation, whatever. It's cold yeah. enough for ice on the foot box. But I, that morning I go to log walk, this real big deadfall snag. I go to log walk and it's dark and I wasn't paying close enough attention. Total rookie mistake. And I go to log walk across this big long thing. I'm like, I don't know what, four or five feet in the air mm-hmm. on the, on the top log. Dude, my feet just decleated. Oh. Gone. 50 pound pack hit my ribs on the side and thank God it was a smooth log. It didn't have any of those spikes on it. So this was one with no bark on it. No bark. Yeah, those are dead. But right? I didn't like I didn't look. It you was a total rookie you, mistake. Yeah. I should have like shined my light on it to see if it's got frost and I didn't. That could have been yeah, really, been really bad. bad. Mm-hmm. Like I straight up bounced off my ribs, bent my thumbnail back. Oh. I'm like, okay, well, we're not log walking this morning. Nope. So we'll just tone it down a little bit and take our time to get in there. Yeah. That was like pretty quick into the hunt too that yeah. was fucking scary i remember seeing that it was like t- i told myself in the head like i'm not gonna log walk because i now i have like a weapon in my hand yeah um and you know god forbid but i fall and then just break my bow or something yeah and it's, or it's not shooting the way i wanted to shoot yeah so i was like you know i'm just gonna play it safe we got a lot of logs here but the clear way and like the clear path to start to make this happen it's gonna be patience and we're not gonna log yeah. walk in the morning. So they they learned from my rookie mistake when I almost stabbed myself into the ribs, had a collapsed <laughs> lung. <laughs> so we we start hiking up and uh the bugles, you know, he's sounding off pretty good, so we can tell we're oh, getting sounds, closer. On his on his own. Th- we're hearing one But you guys very, aren't you guys aren't calling back or anything. Not yet. We're hearing one very consistent call. 
and uh, one, two more in the distance, yeah. but like one very consistent, very vocal bull. And I'm like, okay, this is this bull. Mm -hmm. He's he's talking. He wants to find something. So I start work. We start working in, and I give him one. As we get like pretty close, I give one good solid bugle just to get him to sound off, so I can tell is he in this cut or the next cut sounds off. I'm like, shit, he's in this cut. Like he's, he's cut the distance and we have two, he's working down, we're working up. And I'm like, we got to get up to this bench right here and I'm going to start cow calling. It took us so long to get to yeah. that bench. Yeah. Like I thought we were going to get there pretty quick, but it was one of those like, get up, back out, go left, go up, back out, go right. Like took forever, yeah. forever, forever. We finally get up to this bench. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start cow calling. We'll see what's going on. So I cow call, he bugles. I cow call, he bugles. Cow call, he doesn't bugle. And I'm like, okay, let's just wait. You know, I was trying to answer every bugle he gave with a cow call. And we're standing there, we're standing there. And then he bugles and it's like, okay, he's he came. Like he stopped bugling because he was moving. You know, you can he's, tell he's cutting the distance. Oh yeah. And I'm like, that bugle is way closer. He cut 100 plus yards. Like he was coming to that cow call. And uh, we're in a good spot, really good spot. We made a great stand. Like we picked a good spot where he had a stumpy dead log. Him and I were on this huge burn ponderosa on each side. So we're like covered. We're in a, made a great stand, good decision on where to stand. And the bull's like bugling, looking for us. And he's getting pissed because now I've cut my cow calls to like one per bugle, you know, and he's like getting pissed trying to make the cow talk more. But he's getting closer, and Cam vapes. He's a big vape guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big wind indicating guy. Okay, big I'm vape glad guy. he clarified <laughs> vaping. Okay, so I'm out there with my little puff bottle, yeah. you know, and I'm like, okay, we got good wind. The thermals are, they're not dropping straight down. They're actually going down off the ridge. They're not just dropping straight down because I was getting a little nervous there. And Cam blows this huge puff of smoke. And it was actually really nice because there's so much smoke in a vape, like so much fog. You can watch it 25 yards away and see what it's still doing, you know? <laughs> and so, shaking my head. Yeah, so, so I did say to Lorenzo, like, I'm going to be one of the best indica wind indicators you've had. Like, I, I already know how well the vape does, especially for a, a cameraman. You can just stand back, these guys doing their shit, and then I can just take a path, and then they can see when the vape's, like, drifting yeah. over their shoulders, or if they don't see it, then it's all good. Yeah. But. I'm going to be honest right now. I've never heard this <laughs> discussed <laughs> I'm on you. any sort of thing, but it's... I, so he told me that, but this is the first time I've now seen it in action. And I'm like, do it again. Do that again. So it became a thing. Yeah, yeah. and it's because I wanted to make sure it was rolling off that ridge and it wasn't dropping low because this <sighs> bull was was now had gotten below us. And we're up on this ridge. We're 100 yards away from where we had that 6 by 7 the first morning. So I'm thinking it might it might be him. Or sorry, that when we failed the mission and got too close to him. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it might be him. We're literally 100 yards from where I put that pin on the map. And... uh I just wanted to make sure our our wind wasn't just dropping straight down and instead it was working that ridge and then mm -hmm. dropping down. And so I'm like, dude, do it again, do it again. So he did it again and I'm like, okay, it's definitely working that ridge, it's not dropping, even though that bull's kind of getting below us. And then I can't remember if it was Cam or me, saw his feet, his hooves, yeah. like 100 yards well, down I, into the live timber. Yeah, I heard him first and then you could hear him sort of walking his way up towards that ridge where yeah. the vape was blowing down. And where this bull stood, the the our, our scent could not have been more than, what, 15 feet off his nose? Yeah. yeah, like I was giving up at that point. I'm like, oh, he's gonna he's hitting the ridge line where the, our, our scent's going. And where his vape cloud hit and where this bull's nose was could not have been more than 10, 15 feet apart. Yeah. So, yeah. like, we're just off his shoulder from him being able to wind us. But the deadfall is so bad he can't come up any further on that side. Yeah. And he's standing there and he bugled once, twice, three times. Mm. And we're like, well, I guess he's not hitting our scent. <laughs> and he wanted to go that way, but he couldn't. couldn't There's too much fall. deadfall. So then he cut into the burn, came out of the live timber into the burn. And he's got these big curvy fronts, big, beautiful six point dark horns, not the six by seven, but a beautiful bull. And I'll let Omar take it from here. Yeah, so he's come. Oh man, I'm gonna need a little bit of help, but he's coming in. And then kind I've of, gone quiet on the cow calls to piss him off. Like I want him searching. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. He's coming in. I think he came in first at like 70. Yeah. So he started like working in 
And then 10 minutes prior to like all this happening, like when I knew, I think there was a point where I knew like this bull's gonna come in and I'm gonna probably get a shot opportunity here. I started just uncontrollably shaking, like legs, hands, just like, sh like I couldn't stop it. I don't know if it was like, it was a combination of like nerves and that, that cold like air like my legs were just like shaking like Elvis. Like it was just so uncontrollable. <laughs> and it, it happened for like 30 minutes. You know, that whole that whole scenario with the bull. I could hear I could hear the <laughs> yeah. that like that oh, kind yeah, of breathing. Exhales. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> you hear on Lorenzo's voice too. I dude, I'll admit all day long, I get so jacked up in those moments. Yeah. The second I don't get that jacked up, I'm done hunting. The yeah. the, the breathing was heavy. Yeah. yeah. And dude, uh, I get pumped in those moments. I love it. And Lorenzo, you're like Control, control your breathing. I remember uh, after like this whole thing uh, happened, um, Cam was like, I was trying to control my breathing too. It wasn't just you. <laughs> yeah. I told I told Omar because I could hear that, <sighs> you know, that breathing. I'm like, take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. You're, everything's mm -hmm. good. We got a great setup. Just take a deep breath. And yeah. I heard Lorenzo say that. So I had to start taking deep breaths as well. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, I'm getting just as excited. Yeah, you're all helping each other right through this process. Like yeah. You're all yeah. have the same feelings. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was a beautiful bull, man. It was a great bull. It's yeah. like hell of a first bull to call in. Like, holy shit, that's the one that came out of the timber? Whoa. Yeah, so he starts working in. I see him at 70 yards. Um, and at this point, you know, I got, the, I got the arrow knocked the whole time. But I'm like, here we go. Like, this is what I've been dreaming for. Like, all like those emotions start coming. Start, like, kind of, like, Put it, like putting themselves on my shoulder i'm like oh my gosh like here we go like this is what you wanted the whole time omar like let's see if you got it um so he comes in he starts working in and then he kind of like gets like a position at 50 yards where he was behind a tree so i couldn't see him but these guys could see him he was behind a tree so i couldn't see him i could kind of just see like antlers moving around like the occasional hoof stepping down but he's at 50 yards um lorenzo's like telling me like he's gonna be at 50. um so now we're kind of just waiting to see if he'll come out into a shooting lane. And I had like this one shooting, like he could have came out to the right, but um, he was gonna come out to the left. And he came out to the left to this one shooting lane that I had. He was at 50 yards and I could see his body and I confirmed with Lorenzo. And I was just like, Lorenzo was like, can you see his body? And I was like, yeah. So all right, like it's time to draw back and shoot him. Um, and that's, you know, kind of where a debacle occurred and everything just went black. Like, you know, I, I could kind of recall that shot, but I started like freaking out. Like I remember, you know, he's at 50 yards. So I'm like, all right, I get the green light. Pins at 50, draw back on the animal. And I'm kind of just like shaking. I don't, I couldn't even tell you if I checked my bubble or anything, which, you know, that's a mistake on me. Definitely something that I'll, that I'll take into account going into the next season. And I just did not go through my shot process whatsoever on that animal, um, which was unfortunate because I owe it to the animal um, and kind of just like punched a shot to him. Uh, we found out later that it was a clean miss and hit the tree behind there, picked up the arrow and all that stuff. But, you know, after that whole debacle happened, I was just kind of bum bummed out. I was like, here's my opportunity. There's, I don't know, 320-ish bull. 315, yeah. 315. Just a yeah. beautiful, gorgeous beautiful bull. bull. Yeah. Beautiful not, bull. Not even, I didn't even look at the horns or nothing because I was trying to get a yeah, character. He had these big wavy fronts like they dipped up roll and then kind of went like had some wave in them just a beautiful bull ivory tipped and dark oh, horn yeah, yeah. You know. and shoot and then uh he spooks off and we see him run off and he's gone forever we go and check the arrow make sure there's no blood on it or anything on there no blood on the arrow um but yeah i remember just going back there and you know lorenzo's down there he's like stand where you shot from so he's like raging back and he's like yeah it was a 50 yard shot like 50.1 yeah 50.1 um so yeah, I missed that bull. And we were um, talking. We were talking about it though. You know, it's hunting situation as opposed to target practice situation. He had, you know, the, there's that tall mountain grass, and mm -hmm. I think this is what I think this is what made him send it high. I w I'm guessing. You know, you yeah. were blacked out in the moment, so we were trying <laughs> to figure it out. But like that, that grass is where you he wanted to hold the pin, or where you yeah. should hold the pin. And I was telling him, I'm like, you know, it's optically i know it looks weird but that at 50 yards that arrow arc is perfect you're in. you're going right over that grass mm -hmm. i mean just put that pin right in the grass just bury it into the grass where yeah. his vitals are and that arrow is not going to touch any of it it's that perfect length where the arrow is just over the top of it the whole time it's going to arc right into it you know mm -hmm. like that my guess is that's what made him punch it high because optically you, i mean you're holding you're not on the animal right mm -hmm. but that's a hunting situation is you're 
you know, you gotta, you gotta account for the drop. And it's like, you know, you see the top third of them, but his vitals are wide open. You just have that grass that's 15 yards in front of you that you're seeing, you know? It's like, it's, it's so anyways, I think that's why you might've punched it high is just optically and mentally, you're just like, no, you know, yeah. as you're shooting. Yeah. But yeah, so that happened. Um, and to be honest, I was pretty bummed out because, you know, all you could all you could hope for is, you know, Lorenzo is helping me get into that situation. And then all like I'm really focused on in that scenario is executing on a shot. And I completely failed the mission. So it was an awesome mission, though, because that bull was so curious because when he got close, I shut up and he's like he's frustrated because he wants to find the cow. And I'm not calling back at him anymore. And there's deadfall everywhere, so he wants to go, but he can't. So he's like, you know, mm-hmm. doing the dove thing. He's changing directions every five seconds, trying to like work his way up this ridge because he's pissed. He's frustrated. He wants to find the cows. I've gone dead silent on the cow call, and he's like, it. It was awesome because like the bull was in the mindset you want. He's curious. He's mm-hmm. moving. He's going through shooting lanes. He's you know getting closer as much as he can with the deadfall. Gets to fifty point one, and it's like, dude, that was a fun. That was a fun experience. Right yeah. up until the arrow flying was like perfect. So fun. Yeah. Sorry, boys. That's, that's no. what I was, <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, I, I wasn't mad about you missing either. Oh, yeah. This like, is an important part too. Because it, it all builds up in story. Like, yeah, f- physically I want to get the job done as quickly as possible and get out of there. But for the story's sake, all of this shit's awesome. Well, not even capture. that, but like you didn't have a shot, right? Like, Yeah, well, well – the the frame that I had, you can just see parts of his face and then just antlers. So it wasn't ever going to be the flashiest kill shot. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. you know this shit ain't Hollywood, and you just yeah, kind of so you get stuck where you're stuck. Yeah. yeah. It's like everyone always wonders why do you get the kill shot? This ain't this ain't Hollywood, bro. Like yeah. th- we're we're hunting. Like it's just what happens. Yeah. And, you can't ask the bull to step to the right. Yeah. One, so his, one meter. <laughs> it's funny how it's funny how things work. You know, and, and it's just the first. Uh, archery, big game animal. First big game animal. There you go. <laughs> and, Clarified. you know, it's like you can't just smoke your first. No. You, you, you got to have some debacle. And this you know? is, well, all before 10 o'clock opening? Dude, this oh, is like yeah. 7.30 like, in the yeah. morning. Yeah. So from what I'd seen so far, I was like, we're You're in a good place. Yeah. We're going to yeah. have more chances. But, it, yeah. but we hadn't been like in elk. We mm-hmm. had just that six by seven and the bull that was calling below him and now this lone bull. Mm-hmm. So like... We weren't in the mess of yeah. the rut, and I'm like, oh, maybe the rut's not on. Maybe that's what it is. Because to see these two mature bulls coming into cow calls, like maybe the rut's just not on. It'll be a slower hunt, but at least we're they're responding to cow calls. So you know, my mind's a little like, mm-hmm. we'll make it work. It might not be the experience that I have with trail, but we'll make it work. Like and I'm not worried about it. And uh, you know, Omar was, how bad was he shaking after the shot? Yeah, it's you know it's bad when it's visible on camera. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, I don't, Bad's probably I don't the know wrong why word, I'm shaking. But... I'm like, I know exactly why you're yeah. shaking. You just you just yeah. drew back and shot at a beautiful bull elk. Came in screaming like, that's why you're shaking. Yeah. Pretty did, understandable. Yeah. Did you uh, expect any of those feelings to feel that way after like getting a bull come in? you know, shaking that uncontrollably. Like you had probably an idea of what it was going to be like because you've seen a lot of videos, probably heard people talking about it, but like what was it really like to experience that exact thing? And what do you think you could do? Or do you think there is a way to prepare for that? Or do you think it's just got to be in those situations? Yeah, I think one is like, you know, and there's one thing Lorenzo tells me all the time is like, you just got to get good at killing, Yeah, you know? So like, I think one is like being in those situations more, like maybe, you know, I think down the road, hopefully I can control it more, but like even Lorenzo, who's been hunting elk for a long time, he's still shaking and he's not even shooting. Right. Yeah. Um, he's just ra- ranging the animal, getting calling and doing a bunch still. But like, you know, it's, so it's, I think it's one of those things where it's, um, I don't think it'll ever go away because it's something you can't control. Like mm-hmm. you can't, you can't honestly put yourself in those situations yeah. enough to control control your no. body and i think that's something that's just the human aspect of hunting and something that makes hunting so awesome is like you get these uncontrollable emotions you don't know how your body's gonna like how, how you are gonna do emotionally physically um so one i don't think i'll ever be able to control that but i think what i can control is that drawback and that shot process and yeah. just have that in my head like all right like this is you know the scenario that i'm posted at like this is where the animals at 50 yards i can't get them to come you know 20 you know mm-hmm. as great as that'd be that's not going to happen 
Um, but we, what I can control more, and what I thought I actually did a good job of was shooting, um, but I did not execute on my shot process whatsoever on that first shot. I kind of just, you know, went into this blackout, drew back, and sent an arrow. Like, you know, I, on the, we'll get into it later, but there's another shot where I'm not going to talk about it. But, um, yeah, it's just that, that, that shot execution. I just need to have that yeah. in my head. And no matter what the scenario is, whenever I draw back on an animal, it's my job and my responsibility to give that animal, you know, a lethal shot if I'm deciding to send an arrow. So, I, you know, going forward is just like, knowing that shot execution, drawing back the bow, uh, bow and uh, my levels all, all level. Um, and I just feel calm as much as I can and then letting it fly. Cause that, you know, that will ultimately lead into a, a lethal shot into an yeah. animal. And it's, it's like one of those experiences that I do hope everyone gets oh. to have in their life. Every new hunter, whoever listens to something, listens to this podcast, like that moment right there it's so is, special is everything. Yep. Is literally everything. Is the time you got the tag in your hand, all that prep through the whole whole off season, that's the moment you're waiting for. And when yep. it happens, and even if it doesn't happen, it's still just the best feeling in the entire world. It's yes. impossible to describe to anyone. Non-hunters will never understand it until you're in that situation and you're putting yourself there. That's the feeling. Yeah. That's why you continue doing things in life, just yeah. for that. There's probably something wrong if you're not yeah. having that feeling. Mm -hmm. I agree. If and you that, if you are calm on like your first kill, being that close to the bow, there's probably something wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> and that, and that, that's ex this is exactly what I mean by you just have to get good at killing. And I am, I am not ashamed to admit, and I'm actually very proud to admit, that I get so jacked up in those moments. And what I mean by being good at killing is like I love, I love the mental struggle of like getting a hold of myself mm -hmm. in that moment where I am drawn back. And I love that, that second person in my mind, yeah. that higher self in my mind of like, you've done this before, get control, take a deep breath. I love that. Like so many emotions are spun out of control. And then having that wrestle in my head of like, you you've done this, like get yeah. it back, get yeah. it back, get it back. Come on, get it back. Well, and then you, you execute that shot. And then I, me personally, I have uncontrollable like responses after I let it fly because <laughs> I work so hard because yeah. I do get so amped up and I love that I get amped up and I have to work so hard to calm myself down. And then afterwards, I'm just like, oh, my God, total yeah, blackout. It's a giant emotional total adrenaline blackout. And, and that, that conversation about um, getting good at killing, because I'm, I'm not sure if it's the exact same here, but that actually came up when we were talking about um, – buddies that I've got back home that spend a lot of time in the hills and like some of these friends, they're still new to hunting, but they're spending a lot of time just looking at passing up animals. And that's awesome, you know, like seeing mm -hmm. a bull that's a bit young, um, that whole thing, but they spend so much time passing up animals just wanting to kill a giant that you start to forget how you actually kill something. And mm -hmm. I, I think the same goes with the rifle as well. Like being able to shoot in a position that's not set up ideally for shooting, for being able to track animals, for mm -hmm. knowing when to pull the trigger. Just there's a whole process to actually killing an animal. And I think you yeah. start to lose touch with that if you go hunt after hunt after hunt, just letting things walk, hoping to kill a giant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that getting good at killing, you know, I've, over the years it's just like, you have these convulsions in your body where you're like, I didn't even mean to shoot. I don't know why, how that shot went off. I didn't even mean to, but like you just have your body just has these reactions. And if you don't, if you don't have that conversation, that higher self conversation, when you're in that moment drawn back or on the, on the trigger, whatever it is, it's like, dude, you will, you'll punch it. You'll, mm -hmm. there's oh, uncontrollable. Yeah. You have to like, no, nothing is close to the trigger until you have control and then you move into your, into your trigger position you know what i mean that's that good get good at killing thing yeah and so so how hard was it to uh let those thoughts get out of your head and just forget about it and move on was it difficult it, yeah it was 100 percent difficult i thought you did an awesome job though but uh, he didn't he didn't like mourn on the situation like it came and went and he's like he was good but I, i'm and we're working on this but i'm like someone who will mourn like mentally and I'll just like beat him. like the whole time up until like we got into that other herd, like the whole time I was beating myself up. As in he doesn't show it. Because I, I was thinking about that on camera after the situation. You can see him shaking, but his face is like Stoic. normal. And then I'm like, 
how you doing? And he's like, oh, yeah, that was exciting. <laughs> and it's <laughs> like, is it, like yeah. he, he really suppresses his feelings, but, you know, it was, it was a bit of a quiet His body walk. was shaking uncontrollably, literally uncontrollably, <laughs> but his face was stoic and he's like, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'll get it figured out. And I'm like, something's <laughs> going on in there, <laughs> bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It, was, it was good. I mean, it was awesome for the rest of the situation because he had the, you know, call it a practice run. Mm-hmm. Um, had that feeling, full draw, 50 yards, bull, everything you'd hope for. Yeah. And, and yeah, I think I said something along the lines when I w- finally decided to like let that situation pass and like, okay, that happened. Like I told, you know, I, I'm a guy, I like, I like comedy. I like joking around, especially back there. I was like, we don't want it to be that easy anyways, right? So, and never, all the guys were like, no, exactly. That's exactly right. We're yeah, gonna, you can't we're kill gonna your first, first one. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Can't do that. Yeah. No. So, anyways, we walk this. We find a ton of sign, and I'm like, "Oh, this is where they're using this, right?" Because mm-hmm. it, it dropped us off into the bottom. Because the way he went dropped us off into the bottom, and I'm like, "Dude, this this river creek bottom is this thing is caked with bulls. There is a herd in here somewhere." Like, I was thinking maybe there's just these one off bulls that are maybe in transition pre-rut kind of a thing, like just looking for cows. That's why we're only seeing bulls and that's why they're coming into calls. Maybe they're searching, whatever it is. But the amount of sign in that creek bottom was like, okay. Yeah, there's, it was like New York City. There's a pile yeah. in here somewhere. We're just not on them yet. <laughs> and uh, clear up the ridge at 11,200 feet. And we're at like 8,500 feet or something. <laughs> we hear a bugle, faint hmm. bugle, faint bugle. And we're like... Well, that must have been where he went. And there's nothing doing down here. So eat some lunch. The, sometimes the best way to kill a bull is take a nap. Yeah. We laid there, took a little nap, ate some food. Got some water. Got some water. Waterlogged ourselves just because that other creek was dry. It's like, all right, let's go up and over the ridge. And uh, the beautiful thing, no one complained. No one even thought twice about it. We're like, yep, that's where we're going. Yeah. We get up to the top. I can't hear worth a shit. I have tinnitus horrible in both my ears my ears ring constantly um i actually had a a comment on my gear list of like oh you sleep with earplugs you must not have any ringing in your ears like no i actually have horrible ringing it's like my built-in white noise though when i put in earplugs it's like built-in white noise i don't need a white noise machine i can i'm just that ringing my ears kind of lullabies me to sleep you know (laughs) so (laughs) i'm up the top we get to the top we all get to the top and i'm like omar are you hearing that it's like yeah, it sounds like a ton of bugles. I'm like, it almost sounds like it's just one constant bugle. Is that the wind in the trees? What the fuck is going on? Yeah. Is that really what I'm hearing? And, you know, you and Cam both have never been in, like, a that true cyclone of an elk rut. So you guys are like, uh, I don't know, I think, you know? It's yeah. not like Trail who's like, yep, I know exactly what that, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I can't hear where the shit, those guys haven't heard it before. So we're all kind of. Looking at each other going, man, is this wind in the trees? What the, what the hell is going on? We start dropping off this ridge. This is the highest ridge in the unit, by the way, like ridge line that runs to the top. So we're clear at the top of that, and we start working down, and it is a steep face, and it goes for a long ways down to the deepest mm. bottom of a creek bottom. It's like, of course, right? The highest ridge, of, of course, is going to be connected to the lowest oh, yeah. creek bottom. It's just <laughs> the way it works. Goes. So we start working off this ridge, and we're losing a lot of elevation. And it, I even I think I was the first one to complain. Honestly, I think I looked at you guys like, "Are we really doing this? We're committing to the bottom." The first one to complain out loud. Out loud, yeah. <laughs> I looked at him like, "We really, you guys, cool? We really doing this? We're dropping clear to the bottom." And they're like, "Yep, cool. Let's go." So we start dropping off, dropping off, and then the bugles start getting like yeah. you can tell they're bugles, and we all looked at each other like, "What the fuck is going on down there?" You dropped into a bugle party. We dropped into. Well, first off, mission failed again. I was pushing a little too hard without really listening. I was amped up after that, you know, after that shot and all this stuff. And I pushed a little too hard without like listening to what's going on and getting mm-hmm. a real good feel. We had great wind, so I was just pushing hard. Well, we get to this bench and I go to take a step and I, I literally just, you would have thought I stepped on a log and like slipped. I literally took this step and just like, like went over to my side. There's 50 cows 40 yards away from me. Oh, gosh. And the sun, it's afternoon now, and we're facing east. Or, sorry, we're facing west. And so the sun is just, like, beating on us. 
and I've dropped down and I look at them. I'm like, dude, we can't move. No one move. We look like a bunch of flashlights up here. You know, I, I didn't even knew that. That I didn't even knew that they were that close. Yeah, they were forty yards. Because I, I was probably twenty yards behind them. So, I, I yeah. So I thought you guys were freaking out, and then maybe twenty minutes later is when I eventually peeped over your shoulders and saw them maybe like two hundred yards away. Yeah, I never realized they were that close. And that was the lower group. The yeah. higher group, the the <sighs> higher group of forty cows. There was a hundred cows total. We'll just fast forward that part. But forty of them were like right below me. And I told Omar, I'm like, we can't move. Your bow's going to shine. The camera's going to shine. Our binos are going to shine. Like, he went to pull out his binos. I'm like, no. Like, mm. we are, we it's look bad. like mag lights up here. We just, we got to sit tight. Well, we're sitting tight. And I'm like peeking to see where the, a bull is because I just see these cows, but I hear bugles. Like, I mean, it is one constant bugle is how many bulls were down there all making noise. I'm like, dude, we found the herd. We are on them. And I'm moving around. I'm like snaking around kind of on my belly looking. And I, I see the herd bull coming up and, but he's, he's clear to our right. Like he was kind of fending off the satellite bulls below him. And we couldn't have got a shot either because I mean, all those cows and were a bunch of mag lights sitting there. So I don't know what to do. And I told Omar, I'm like, I see the herd bull. He's big. Like his bull is big. And I'm looking and looking and looking. I look to my left, and, of course, there's two cows 200 yards left that just have us pinned, and they've probably had us pinned since the start. Mm -hmm. And I never <laughs> looked over there like an idiot. Rookie mistake again, thinking all the cows are just right there. Of course there's two cows over to our left that just had yep, us pinned the whole time. Little lookouts. And they Satellites. they finally barked and busted. Centuries. And, uh, yeah, the, the century cows, the ones I despise <laughs> and they but we had such good wind and everything they pushed down to the lower bench and calmed back down so now they're like 200 yards away and we now we can move we can glass you know mm -hmm. everything's calmed back down how many bulls so many how many bulls it was the coolest thing ever it was, you said it something was, about that yeah it was wild shit and like obviously i've got footage of it so you can sort of see what we were seeing but like i don't know in one frame you don't exactly see how many animals are actually there you know because they're all moving through the timber all squealing the whole time screaming the whole time i remember just thinking like this is like national geographic and these are just like ants running all over like this hillside yeah, yeah. and it was like it was the coolest thing i could like everything that i ever wanted to experience in an elk hunt even though i hadn't killed them, i was experiencing right there and it was just like the coolest thing ever like looking at this big herd bull there's this other second bull that was big with him and then like all these other satellite bulls that are all six by sixes Jeez. and i'm like this is just like an elk hunter's dream and i'm like pinching myself I'm like is this even real life like, he, this he was so over cool. my shoulder every five seconds like this is so awesome <laughs> this is so cool did you see that bull did you see this bull i'm like yeah bro this is wild huh. this is so cool i can't believe it this is unbelievable this is national geographic <laughs> i'm like soak it in man this is wild so we're we're watching these bulls and we you know we're making little moves just we got so much time left in the afternoon so we're just making little moves 20 30 yards at a time and not not really pushing in on them to go kill one but just staying close to them mm -hmm. and uh I, I don't know i'm i'm known to dramatize things i don't really give a shit there's <laughs> 30 bulls 35 bulls and there's 150 cows yeah i don't know that might be a little high Too many but to count. that's what in my mind's eye they were everywhere and there was that many animals and uh you know, this bull's a six point, this bull's a six point. Look at that bull. That bull's got cool turned in backs. This bull's got a huge back end. This was like Golly. so much fun to look at. So we're sitting on the hill and all of them kind of drop off that. So they dropped a bench. We were on a bench. They, the cows were 40 yards to us. They all dropped off one bench lower. Then they all started feeding off that bench. And as they start to feed off that bench below us, I'm like, dude, big push. Let's go. And oh, there's remember a, we saw those bulls fighting. Yeah, there's yeah. two bulls fighting, mm -hmm. and the one peeled off yep. and went to go start raking a tree. Yeah. Great time to stock a bull. Yep. Phenomenal time to stock a bull with no cows. So we, I'm like, dude, get your shit. Let's go. So we are, we're like, I'm getting ready to Hussein Bolt down this, this hill because <laughs> this bull's in no cows all by himself. He's the last one on the ridge raking in these trees. You can get so close to bulls when they're doing shit like that with no cows. You know, I've done it before. It's so fun to hunt a bull like that, a lone bull. And uh, as we get about a third of the way there, big old bull 
turned in back fist, the, the fist that turned in that we saw earlier starts coming back towards us. And I'm like, you know, Holt, stop. <laughs> Let's all yeah. lay down. So we're there and I start cow calling. He starts bugling. I start cow calling and he's like real interested. And, uh, he beds down cause he's like, you know, I, his body language to me is he was pissed. Like, dude, you're the only cow left up there. You're coming down to us. I'm not yeah. coming up there. Just back and forth. He beds down bugling from his bed. I cow call. He bugles and he's not moving. I'm like, dude, I don't know what to do. This bull's still raking in the trees, mm-hmm. and, but this bull, like, do we bump him? But the whole herd's behind him. I don't know what to do. It starts spitting rain. Not like, not crazy. We hear the thunder. We heard the thunder, but it's it wasn't, none of us put rain gear on. We were yeah. all just sitting there because it was just a little spit of rain. Yeah. yeah. And I'm looking at the clouds and there's some blue sky and I'm like, mm, no rain gear. Hmm. And we're sitting there and breaks off for a little bit and then it comes back in spitting rain and I'm like, I don't know what to do. This bull's better there. Do we push him? Uh, next thing we know, this rainstorm comes in. It was some hail. It was Jeez. a torrential downpour. Yeah. Like sleet, bit of hail, rain, cold. Cold. So I I dig my tarp out of my bag. Because <laughs> we got a bull bedded 100 yards away, 120 yards away from us. Gosh. I dig it out and I just cover myself, you know, I'm just laying <laughs> under the tarp. I hear them, they start, he's got camera gear, you know, he's got to protect it. You did risk it though. Yeah, I was, I was risking the biscuits. Yeah. That's for sure. I did. He didn't have a rain fly, but me being the guy I am, I threw him my rain fly. Look at nice you. Guy. Yeah, so smart. Nice he, guy. He, he didn't pack one for me. Sorry. Oh, I okay. I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> that wasn't camera. on the gear list request. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's the hardest thing filming those situations because that's like, that's an epic shit, you know, like that's, mm-hmm. that's as a hunter, that's when you're reminded how much of a pussy we are when that weather comes in animals are happy as they're just carrying on life's, yeah. life's normal Dude, this thing's bedded bugling and, at us and oh. we're stressing out about the rain so i want to capture that but it's like man if i start pulling out my cameras yeah you know that's like my livelihood and just two little bodies right there but yeah we just end up by hanging out i got some shots of it like you know i was filming Lorenzo pulling his tarp over all of that that's a that's a a pro move, right? Very little movement and get everything covered. And then I hear Omar. I mean, no one did anything wrong. You know, I'm not not saying any of that, but like I can hear them start digging in their packs and pulling out rain gear and all this shit. And I'm like, okay, like this bull, <laughs> he's 125 yards. Like yeah, we're, he's hear something. Yeah. we're screwed, you know, whatever. Says so the guy pulling over like a giant fly. But I stayed low. It's like, it's <laughs> a way to... Flapping in the wind. No, no, no. It's like, I stayed, I just, I was on my side, I pulled it out. It's, it's one of those, like, yeah, that's why I like you. having a tarp is, you know, no zippers, no this, no that, no moving, no putting on a jacket, your arms flailing, you just kind of like lean over. And uh, all that noise, and it's, I mean, that rainstorm was so bad, like, you got to do what you got to do. So anyways, that bull gets up and starts walking off. I hear Omar Cal calling. I peek out from underneath my tarp, and he's like, oh, it's moving over there. I'm like, oh, look. I'm like, ah, that bull's, like, he doesn't like what he saw. You know, we're all making a bunch of noise and rain gear and shit now. That bull moves off, but the other one's still in the trees raking. It's like 10 minutes later, he's still. Well, well there was a, it was a fawn, was it? Oh, yeah. That a, little... a fawn or a yearling, yeah, that's what we call them. That busted off, and that thing was sitting probably 40, 50 yards off us. Yeah. Like, that was right in the gut. And then so while Lorenzo was um, under his fly, I actually filmed the bull and he and he had seen her bust off and he actually ended up by moving around us and then following her into some hmm. thicker. Yeah, and they dropped off. Ones. But then it left that bull in the raking the tree open. And I'm like, dude, let's go. Like, this is our chance. So we, I put rain gear on because he's in the, you know, he's facing away from us raking this tree 200 yards away. So we have full rain gear on and we're dropping off. And of course, like as we start making that big push, he finally stops raking the tree. He'd been doing it for 10, 15 minutes, literally, yeah. like forever. And it would have been, if that bull never, that turned in fifths bull, if he didn't come out in bed, like who knows what would have happened. But he finally starts moving. So we're hunting now and it's cold. It's one of those like oh, yeah, after the rain. high country after rain, cold, and it's still really wet. So I don't, I still have my rain gear on because everything's soaking wet. I look back at Omar, and we're we're in elk though. Like we're we're in them. We're no more than two hundred yards off these elk, and I'm cow calling, and they're responding. And uh, I look at Omar. He's got no nothing on. He's got a t-shirt. On. <laughs> what? I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Like we're we are <laughs> moving right now. Yeah, I, I don't think I can make a shot with rain gear on. I'm like, 
Okay. All right. Let's be honest and at least. And it's still like misting, so we're wet and it's cold. He's out there with no rain gear, just a t-shirt, and we're chasing these elk. And that that like post storm wind mist, it's real loud, you know. Mm-hmm. So we actually we used it as a opportunity to push in really yeah. tight in the middle of this herd. Like we used it to just push right in the middle of them because everything was so loud. We had a bull at sixty that was feeding. Yep, and that the one that was in the aspens right there. Yep. Yeah, good bull we feeding. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, six points, and waiting for him to feed out in you know post storm wind wind swirled. He was going to come out at like 55 in our shooting lane. He was feeding right to it. If we had an extra uh, three minutes, he probably yeah. would have fed, fed yeah. through that. Yeah, I want to <clears> – <throat> another rookie mis- a rookie mistake that I made was I, I kind of drew back, like pretend like I would like – not with my bow or anything, but like put my, my hands in that position. I was like, this doesn't feel like normal. Like I'm, I don't know if you could ever – like people ever practice in Vegas. I mean, excuse me, ever practice in rain gear, let alone in Vegas. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know. I'm going to take this off. And I was like super loud. And I remember you saying like, we can't do that again. That was really loud. Really loud. And I was like learning experience. Like if I'm going to put on this rain gear, I got to commit to taking a shot with it. Yeah. Um, so I remember. Because we were in tight at that yeah, moment too. When you took it off and put it in your bag, I'm like, dude, that was loud. Yeah. And I ripped off my pack and everything. So I was like, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't do that next time. Um, but yeah, then then from there, I kind of just committed to I'm going to freeze my butt off and I'm going to get did. rained on. And I, I did freeze my butt <laughs> off. But like, so now we're in the middle of this herd and I'm just cow calling, waiting for bulls to come in because we got satellites to our left. We got the two herd bulls with all the cows to our right. That was a damn cool experience too because yeah. we were so close to them. I and mean, we were 150 yards from the two herd bulls, all the cows. And, and the audio is just screaming bulls. And we're, we're swallowed up so cool. by the satellites. Like we have them cut off. All felt really good. It was a good position because those cows were like up ahead. Yeah. And we we're just starting to wake, make our way in. Like we were almost fully 360 surrounded by bulls. We just didn't have bulls like to where we came from. Yeah. But we had bulls all all to the left. Like of the 270 of degrees of us was surrounded by elk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're calling. But it's one of those things where like all of them are responding. All the satellites, they just won't break the timber line. You know, they just won't break that line of trees right in front of you to get a shot. You can see them. You can hear they're they're breathing down your throat, essentially, with the bugles. It's like, man, we just need one. We just need one to break. Post-storm wind again, swirls, cows get it. They, but it was it was like a real kind of pussy-footed bust, yeah. you know? It wasn't a true bust. Mm-hmm. It was like a whatever. Uncomfortable. Just, uncomfortable. Move, move yeah. off. Like something's not right. That's a good way to put it. Like, we were 125 yards away from them. They must have just got one cow probably just got like a slight what the hell was that kind of a thing. And they just pushed 20 yards into the trees. Instead of being in the burn, they just pushed 20 yards into the trees. Not a true bust, but it allowed us to move again because they Mm, couldn't see us anymore. So we pushed a little bit lower and we started working back to the south, all those satellite bulls. Is this still deadfall? Oh, horrible. Mm. Yeah. We started working south back to the south of those satellite bulls that had broke off some of the cows. And so we're, you know, we're moving in on the bugles that we're hearing. You know, when you, when you have 100 cows with two herd bulls, good luck. Like, yeah. you're going to need 25 days to kill one of those bulls. You know what I mean? You just yeah. need to get wildly lucky. I'm like, let's go call in. You know, I like to call in elk. That's, the, that's why I hunt them. Mm-hmm. I don't really give a shit about, you know, herd bulls and all that. I like the setup of elk. So this is where I can get along with trail. This is, this is minor trails thing. I don't want to hunt them if they're not bugling. That's like the only time that they're fun but uh we start working them back to the south dude we we were making so much noise chasing this bugle and omar and i we come across this creek like this deep creek we're cracking branches everything all of a sudden this bull bus yeah like 10 yards from our right we're like where the fuck where did that bull come from like he didn't bugle no cows we're chasing what the where did that bull come from like dude that would have been awesome we would have just seen him and yeah, let him yeah. kind of work out in front of us. <laughs> that would have been that would have been fantastic. That that was great. Well, we work down the ridge another 150 yards, and I start calling. And I'm I'm pretty damn sure it's the same bull. I'm almost positive it's the same bull that we bumped at 10 yards. But he had a cow. Now, and I was I we made the stand in the perfect little standless little but pinch. Remember, like before be- before we did that, it was our because like this whole ordeal from start. To end, it was like six thirty or six ish. 
six. Yeah, it was like six ish, and we're almost like at that point where like we know where they're at. We're like we're on them. Should we kind of like wait out? Should here we and pull hydrate? camp? Yeah. yeah. Should we pull up and pull camp? Should we hydrate? Should we stop at this creek we just passed, this wallowing creek? Like, what do we do? Yeah. And I looked at Omar. I said, what do you want to do? You want to chase that bugle? And Omar was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. I'll, I'll chase it with you. Yeah. So we start chasing this bugle, and we, we got to this pinch of aspens and pines. There was like this little perfect little pinch where to our left was all burn and deadfall. 100 yards below us was all aspen region, like all aspen saplings. So we're kind of in this little like pocket and I started cow calling and this bull bugles and we responded to the cow call, cow call again, bugles like, Oh shit, he's, he's coming like for sure coming. Let's all tuck into this. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's all tuck into this little pinch and coming out of the Aspen region was a cow. And I'm like, Oh no, like he's got a cow yep. and it's a six point bull right on her tail. And this is probably one of the cooler shot sequences, right? Because, it was, I mean, it's it's so close. It's just out of shooting range. It was like 80 yards to those Aspen saplings. Yeah. And every time I would cow call, that cow wanted to get the hell away from that bull. So she was coming into the cow call, and the bull was just following whatever she did. But, you know, any any weekend warrior elk hunter like myself cannot cow call good enough to make a cow believe it's a cow when they're when yeah. you're actually like face-to-face. So every time she'd break the aspen saplings, I'd stop calling because I don't want to bust her. She would know immediately that is a, not a cow calling. And every time they'd turn to go back into the aspen saplings, I'd cow call again and turn her back around. It happened three, four times. Yeah, I think it was three or four times. I mean, this is like a 15-minute stand Jeez. where they she'd want to come into the cow call and she'd look for it and she'd mew a couple times. And then that bull would drive her so crazy she would turn around and dip back off below the bench. And I'd cow call again. She'd come back out, she'd poke her head out looking, and bull would drive her crazy, and she'd go back into the Aspen region. And I just kept doing it, um, not really knowing what to expect. Like the fourth or fifth time, I can't remember, I think it was the fourth time, mm -hmm. a cow called. All I see is antler tips and no cow. Mm -hmm. I'm like, here we go. Like he ditched that cow, he's sick of her. Dude, this bull, he came from 80 to 30 in. So fast. I mean in five seconds, 10 seconds, just clearing like that horse tr dressage, clearing deadfall, bugling, growling. And uh, at the time, Omar, cause he's like, I need, I need exact yardage. I'm like, dude, elk hunting doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't. It's, they move so much. It doesn't work. He's like, I need exact yardage. I'm not wounding a bull. I'm like, I, I, I lied to him. <laughs> that's pretty good 100 percent lied to him <laughs> and, you know he shoots a fast bow yeah. 280 feet per second yeah and, dude the difference on a bull elk the difference between 30 and 45 or even like 30 and 50 you're gonna kill him you know like you're either gonna heart shot him or high lung shot him it, you mm -hmm. know and i'm not that's that's not i'm not saying that out of disrespect and like not care i'm, I'm saying it out of experience i'm saying it out of fact their kill zone and your, your archery tackle, like, dude, uh, you're still there. right in the sweet spot. If I tell you 35 and he's 45, okay, you, you, you hit him closer to the heart than you did top of the lung. Like, mm. it's just it's just matter of fact. And that's what I mean by getting good at killing, too, is, like, just getting that visual. I'm If I pick my top pin or my third pin, I'm either high lungs or I'm low heart. Like, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. and he, has a, he has a dial. And he yeah. Single refused. Pin. And he, I don't know if you can hear it in audio, but he's, like, yelling at me. I need exact yardage. I'm like, <laughs> dude, he's moving so fast. I need exact yardage. I'm like, he's 50 now, he's going to be 30. And I just, off the top of my head, I didn't have my range finder. I didn't even think about ranging it. I'm just like, he's on this path. Yeah. He's getting closer. He looks 50 now. My guess is he's going to be 30. If he's 40, who gives a shit? Just shoot him, you yeah. know? So I lied to him. I'm like, he's going to be 30, right at 30. Yeah. And uh, so I had, when he was at 50, he's like, Lorenzo was like, he's going to be 30. In my yeah. mind, I've, Thought he like ranged like the spot and was like, okay, sweet. He's gonna be 30, so I dialed back. And um, that's how much he trusts me, you know? Yeah. Are, are you plugging your ears at this point like you did last year with your wife? I got made fun of so much about that. No, no, I got made fun of. I was not plugging my okay. ears on an archery shot. I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that film to come out. I'm you not, haven't heard that. I'm oh, not yeah. lying how jacked up I get in those situations. I'm not lying. And when I don't have the weapon in my hand, I don't have to get control of my mind. I let yeah. myself go you yeah. know what i mean 
because I don't I don't need to make a shot. So I let myself feel all of it. <laughs> um, yeah, two years ago, my wife, it's on film. Cody Bohr was filming it for us. She draws her bow back. <laughs> and he literally, and I, and I plug my ears. I I don't know. I black out. <laughs> Gunshot. I don't know. I plugged my ears and I yeah, got made sorry. fun of so bad. I, I did just, not I just do that. I love again. we have that footage. And yeah. we, we all looked at it internally at the office. Yeah. <laughs> no, still no plugging ears. Okay, we got that out of the way. Getting, still getting made fun of for that. Yeah, just show me just show me the clip as soon as we're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll airdrop it to you later. Um I think he's gonna be thirty. I don't I had no clue. Yeah. But, and, yeah, he's gonna be thirty. And uh I remember Lorenzo said draw, like now, and I said, Okay. Which like shout out to Lorenzo, like Freaking the whole way, like helped me out. Just walking me through it. Walking me through yeah. it, like you which know, is, like similar really to what good. you did with my bear. Yeah. The you know the same thing, um, which you know is a huge blessing of of working here and being like around you guys and hunting with you guys. So I'm like, all right, here we go. He jumped a log, and right when he jumped it, he kind of put his nose down, and he kind of had his nose on the ground, sniffing. I'm like, draw now, now, yeah. and that was a perfect time to draw. Yeah, and then uh, you were like. Like, tell me when to stop him. Tell me when to stop him. And he's like, now? You're like, now? I was like, no, 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 not now, not now. And then uh, I was like, okay, now. So you mewed, stop, stop the bull. And, you know, it's at 30 yards. And i uh, drawn back already. And I remember just looking at my pin and this time settled and, like, everything in. And then, like, had my first experience with, like, dealing with, like, I, I like to think of it as, like, a little devil and a little angel. Um like talking to you and just like, you know, dealing with those emotions and making sure my everything's leveled, everything feels good. And like, I feel calm as much as I can in that situation. So, you know, calm, every, calm the nerves down. I remember like, it felt like 10 minutes, but I remember like looking at like right where I was going to shoot, you know, for like, it was probably like a split second, but I remember like knowing like where I was going to shoot and like, it just felt so long. And then just being like locked into that position, like everything just felt right. I drew back. I had the whole animal in my sight. Like I could see like the whole animal outside of my um, oh side housing. Yeah, my sight housing. And then I just focused into like that one spot where I wanted to place that arrow and then let it go. And it probably wasn't like the best shot. It felt it really was a good. really good shot. It was a very good. Shot. I would have liked that a little bit for like a little bit more back, like five inches, a little bit back. So you tucked it close to the shoulder. Yeah, very close to the shoulder. Yeah. I would have liked a little bit back, but you know, it's always nice to get that pass through and go find your arrow yeah, and it's yeah. caked in blood. He hit, he hit more into the blade of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So oh, it yep. penetrated 16 inches. Mm -hmm. I mean, beautiful shot. Just not where you go get to get your arrow, you know, yeah. he's running away with the arrow in him. Yeah. And, uh, shoot him. And then, you know, he tries to like run up to the top of the top of the hill, but goes like five yards and he's like, stop by deadfall. So he runs all the way down to back where he's like about 60, 50 ish yards. I think it was like at 56 or something. And you range him, he's like, yeah. oh, he's at 56, like send another one. And having that sight, I'm like, you know, trying to dial everything back. Now I'm shaking and kind of like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. you know, the, now it's starting to hit. Like I just shot another, I just shot a bull and um, everything's starting to hit. And I'm like, oh, oh man, like, you know, I wish I had, cause I would have just drawn back and sent another one if I would have had a, you know, a three pin or five pin sight. Um, but then, you know, as I'm getting ready, as the arrow is knocked and I'm getting ready to draw again, we just see that arrow that we just see that bull, you know, just fall on its back. And then, you know, that's Tip where right the over. celebration started. Oh, he There's so much deadfall. Shot. There's so much deadfall. He like didn't know he was getting, you know, blacking out sick. And so he like just kind of stopped. And then because there's so much deadfall, he stood there for five seconds and then just back flipped over. I'm like, no blood trail. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Was some was bear awesome. hugs afterwards. What oh, went on? man, oh, yeah. I was so pumped for him. I was so pumped just because, yeah. dude, the execution was, you know, and it's one of those things that was perfect where, like, he broke. I, I probably did a really bad job of calming the situation because when he broke the aspen saplings without the cow, I immediately, I'm like, dude, you're, get ready, get ready. Oh, like, it's amped happening. Up. So and he's I, probably getting amped up. I, I probably should have been, like, a little calmer about it, but I got pretty <laughs> in when he broke without the cow. I'm like, dude, it's, mm -hmm. this is on. And, uh, and then he's arguing with me about the range and I'm like, it doesn't matter. Set it to 40. No, I need exact yardage. I'm like set it to 40. No, I need exact yardage. 30. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you said it convincing me. He's all right. He's going to be 30. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I lied to him and, uh, I'm like, all right, 
draw, draw now, now. And so he drew and the bull's still going. I'm like, tell me when, tell me when, when he's in your uh, window. And uh, he goes, no, not now, not now, now. I go, mew. And the bull just on Did the brakes. Mew? Yeah, I just mew. And on the brakes, and it's just that perfect, like, that six-point rack just <laughs> turns and looks at us and, like, looking into the trees, like, what the fuck was that? And he's just pinned there. And his vitals are wide open. And he smashed it like a great shot. The only, the only thing, it wasn't a pass through. It was more in the shoulder blade, but the mm -hmm. bull went 30 yards. Yeah. I mean, literally 30 yards. Fixed blade mechanical. Come on. G5 Montech, Montech only. Montech King right now. Yeah. Renzo does have a tattoo of a. Back G5 when I was Montech. dumb enough to get tattoos of things like broadheads, I got a G5 Montech. <laughs> so that's all I can shoot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. <laughs> the render was like, see, G5 month, that's why you shoot G5s. I'm like, I'm sold. <laughs> These are going to be my hunting And, and, and this was what I mentioned that when Lorenzo guessed 30 yards, we ranged the shot. Yeah. And it was like 29.2. Bang on. Yeah. Yeah. It's 29.2. Mm, good at yardage when it comes yeah. to I, Dude, that's from experience too. You experience, know? but also total blind luck. My The whole thing in my mind is we shot your bow through a chronograph. Mm -hmm. I know how you shoot. I've, we've shot in the desert for months leading up to this hunt. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, the difference between. Yeah. 30 and 48, he yeah. the bull was dead. Yeah. Didn't matter. And one thing I've heard you talk a lot about too, which maybe you're subconsciously you, you were doing that, you count steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You always count the elk steps. So you, that's what you use to kind of like yeah. do your yardage judge. You might have got it. Maybe you got a range earlier. I don't know. I and got a count. I got a range on a tree on a dead tree when he first came out with a cow that was 62. So you might have been subconsciously counting steps, and that might have helped you to say yeah. it was 30 yards. Yeah. I just just. I knew that I knew that tree was 62. He passed in front of it, so he's closer than 62. Yep. And he's on a he's on an angle that's coming closer to I was us. Him to you, yeah. You know, so I'm like, he's he's not further than 50, and mm -hmm. his dude, he's like moving fast, like he's closer than 40. I like, just shoot him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That and like, that was the coolest experience ever. Yeah, I mean, like I I, I told Lorenzo like. Dude, I've been waiting to do this for three years. Like ever since, like you know, I'm a late onset hunter, and I was like, dude, I've been waiting to do this like for three years. And you know, we celebrated there, and it was just like so awesome. And like that whole hunt, I could see like Lorenzo hunting it, like it was essentially like his tag. Like he almost probably put in more effort than like yeah, I was just trailing behind. Hundred percent, I put in more effort to your tag. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking first. about it on the drive, and like we wouldn't have been nearly as happy if Lorenzo killed. Yeah. Like it I was just, that. it was just Omar, <laughs> Omar killing a bull in the first one. Cause like it was for me as well. Like if I was watching or filming Lorenzo kill one, it's like, sweet as this guy's been here, neat sort of job mm -hmm. done. Like, you know, it's still epic, but just Omar killing awesome. like a phenomenal first bull on a true hunt, like a mm -hmm. true wilderness backpack <coughs> struggle street hunt. That was cool. It was and awesome. It, and it died in sight. Dude, that was that was really cool. Which is a pretty cool experience for your first watch, one. To watch him yeah. drop in sight was was awesome, and that's dude. It was. It ended up being. I think Cam was the first one to say it when we got to the bowl, and you know, we're exhausted. We hadn't really been able to eat from noon till you shot at six thirty like or something. Yeah. Like we really hadn't been able to eat because we were on elk the whole time. We're exhausted. We went through that rainstorm, the whole thing. So first thing I do is break out food. I'm eating. We're like pretty tired i mean that first bull encounter was 7 15 in the morning this is now 6 45 at night and cam goes i'm pretty sure it was you you go that was literally a week's worth of hunting in yeah, one day one yeah day. yeah that's, that's, a good way to that's how it felt weather encounters emotional roller coaster all of it. it it was a week's worth in 24 in what was that 12 hours of elk hunting yeah like dude it was wild and it was so physical like you know this is where Brady, the, the Brady suck best would be proud of us. It's so goddamn physical, mm -hmm. that hunt is, just in general. And then we got a bull elk on the ground. And now we're like, shit. And we got three guys. One guy is already over 70 pounds with his yeah. back. So we're like very conscious of that. And we're like, well, it's one haul out of here because we got to get to my hunt unit, you know? So we, he, we quarter, he bones it out. I cape out the the head so we can lose all that weight and ripping jaws off all that stuff and then it's like man this is still still really heavy <laughs> like yeah. for three people who have camp on their back i'm at 50 you're at 50 he's at 72 it's like all right like mm -hmm. i don't know 
we just, we got to get this done because we, you know, I'm not, we're not coming back in here. We're so far. You literally can't get further back than we were in that point. And, uh, yeah, not to sound cool or make it sound any cooler than it was, but that is easily the biggest day, heaviest pack I've ever done. And I've been hunting for 25 years. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. That's when you remember. And that was Omar's first. So I told Omar, I'm like, bro, it's kind of crazy to think that your first pack out is my hardest pack out in 25 years. Yeah. Like we literally couldn't be deeper and we only have three guys and mm-hmm. we're all over 50 pounds right now yeah, before yeah. we even put this meat in. What was it like, Omar, walking up to that bull and just seeing their body size for the first time? They're huge. They're huge. <laughs> That's why I don't know why people, it sucks getting them off, but they're so fun to hunt. Like, you know, like, but like walking up to that thing, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is huge. And like, then like this logistics in my head starts creeping in, like how are we going to get this thing out? But, um, I wasn't trying to let that Take be away. in my head too yeah. much too, like yet. I was like, all right, we'll deal with that tomorrow. Or like, you know, later off when we got the meat and we're feeling that how heavy these bags are. But, you know, I got up to the animal and I was just like, wow, like I, <clears throat> I couldn't believe like that it finally happened. Like elk hunting like has been my pinnacle, like you know, not like knockoff thing for so long for three years since I graduated college. And that's like the one thing that I want to do. Like, you know, once I had a year of like, okay, I like hunting. And then like after that year, I was like, I'm going to absolutely immerse myself in hunting. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to, I want to work, you know, for a hunting company, eventually started working for go hunt, uh, last August. So now it's like a full year of being a go hunt three years of like being obsessed with like hunting. And I'm like, okay, like I can't believe it's taken all this long. And like, just like all like, I mean, I've like, not to like make it sound cliche, but like I've like dreamed about elk hunting and I've dreamed about this scenario for so long that like it finally happened. It was just like, it meant the world to me and to be able to share with Lorenzo an awesome person like Cam too. It was just like an amazing experience. I didn't cry, but like I could have cried. <laughs> oh yeah, I, yeah, was those awesome. moments are the best. He uh, he, I remember him when we walked up to the bull. We were just talking about like, dude, how how amazing is that? Like ninety nine point nine percent of people don't even know this exists. Yeah. Like what we just witnessed today. Mm-hmm. Like they might see it on National Geographic and all this, but like it's no no bullshit to see what we saw that day. That cyclone of a rut happening so you do 99.9 percent of people will never experience this we're talking about it and i'm talking to omar i'm like how cool is that he goes i want to kill everything <laughs> like now i want to kill everything i'm like yep. good dude that's the mindset yep. but like one thing too that lorenzo oh like you know did a, did a good job keeping in mind is like it's not always like this dude like you are the lucky one who yeah. you know all the stars lined up for you and like we had it we have it in an amazing hunt just happened, you know, it doesn't always happen like this, which is mm-hmm. true. It was proven. It was proven. 24 hours later, <laughs> we yeah. will make this part of the podcast very quick. We, so we pulled off, we made it in one shot. Well, sorry, on, on, on that note of how amazing that was and how a lot of people won't experience it, even for people listening, like one thing that you can learn is when you plan a trip, plan an epic adventure. Yeah. You know, like if you want to have as much fun as we're having, like, yeah, you've got to strike it. Lucky with getting in amongst a, you know, a massive herd. But if you plan a good adventure where you go go days on struggling, when it does come right, it's going to feel better than any other hunt where you started from the truck, you're sleeping at the truck, you're doing things easy. Yep. Nothing compares to like going through so much struggle and getting rewarded for it. Mm -hmm. And that's it, like... Look, yes, we were in there for two and a half days, but those two and a half days is like a month of a different hunt just because of how physical, yeah, how much elevation you lose to check a spot, to gain, to check a spot, lose, to follow elk, to gain, to go to the next ridge. And it's like the deadfall, it, it's, it was so, that place is so beyond physical. Yeah. It's like all you need in there is two and a half days to really feel those highs and lows and miss a bull mm-hmm. and have to relocate them and then the whole thing and then the rainstorm and freezing your ass off though that whole deal it's like oh, it was a week's worth in two and a half days yeah that's the best venture um and then to to pull an animal off that mountain as far as we were in and then i wanted to make a point to say this on the podcast too i was so pumped to hear omar say it but we're like walking down and you know it's always a it's always a really good sign when you see people on a trail because you know you're getting close right like mm. those day hikers and we had been hiking since 10 something in the morning 
and this is well late into the afternoon, we finally come across our first group of people and Omar was talking about, man, I hope we hope we pass somebody with this elk on my back. You know, you wanted that moment. <laughs> yep. Do we pass a, we pass a, uh, we were thinking it's like a delinquent camp or something. You know what I mean? Like a, <laughs> wait, what? Like a corrections camp. Yeah. Yeah. Like a youth, like a youth, youth corrections. Like camp. Yeah. You know what like I mean? Like troubled youth kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Put them through some tortures and yeah, stuff. So to... all the, all these kids have, they don't know what lives in those mountains. You know, it's like part of that 0.1% I was just talking about. And we go walking through and there's literally 20 of them and they're blocking up the trail and all of them are like jaws on the floor. Omar's got a six point bowl <laughs> caped out, you know, skull showing. We got meat, blood dripping everywhere. We're walking through and Omar goes, that was so fucking cool. I don't know what it would be like to pull up to somewhere in a Lamborghini, but like, that's what it feels like. So <laughs> everyone's floor, like jaws are on the floor. I'm like, good for you, man. Yep. You got that you experience. You got that experience. And then also later... We're walking down, like we saw another hiker and this hiker's like, nice rack. And I'm like, to Lorenzo's like, well, that's the only way up. That's like the only time I'll hear nice rack without being a girl in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I, Dude, I, was, I was holding because I was right behind because <laughs> it, it was a lady that said and I was so close to saying, yeah, you too. <laughs> <laughs> took everything not to say that. But, and you did good and you didn't say <laughs> Yeah. Held but, it in. But that, that pack out, that morning I was so excited about the pack out. Like I genuinely get fizzed up when you know that you're basically fucked and what is this just for our american audience excited okay like i, I was actually excited for the suck fest that that we day. all were that's it, what made it fun yeah. it's yeah, like dude it's, we're we're doing this like, like one shot like, like multiple times i've been in positions where it's like we are so far beyond any sort of comfort and then it sort of gets you a bit jacked up and excited i yeah. think that lasted maybe an hour <laughs> yeah, deep in <laughs> that then, pain then, yeah. yeah and then i was in the mindset of just like let's Let's get out of One here. foot in front of the other. Yeah. yeah. No. Just keep going. This sucks. Yep. Keep going. Yep. This sucks. And, yep. and, and we going. also took a gamble on the trail that we took as well. We, we didn't know if it was going to work. But leading up to that, well, like shortcuts never work. But it wasn't really a shortcut, but it was a gamble on trying to take an easier route out. It was a gamble on less elevation mm-hmm. and less deadfall. And f- man, it worked. It never works. We That's took it. We tried to take a shortcut on the way in. Did not work. Somehow <laughs> everything was lined up for us on that hunt yeah even till when we got to the end and i got it i hitchhiked the ride yeah that would, even like the whole story we came out everything. way lower than our trailhead like way lower making a gamble on his pack was like 115 120 with the with the head my pack was like 110 your pack was 100 at least yeah just because you had neck and neck and uh Back the good old new mexico lines. rules with the 80 percent neck meat you know yeah. You had that in the prime cuts, plus your seventy-something pound pack. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, it, it, yeah, I, I, I got my revenge that day. You yeah, I said the heavier packs, but we yeah. each we had a hind and a quarter each camp. Uh, we had a hind and a front each camp. I had his bow. He had the head. I mean, it was like we That's all. A lot of weight. We're not going to talk about what packs we used, but we all broke buckles. It was just one of those things. Yeah, I had to tie. We all had to tie off straps on. That's, other, a, that's a lot of weight for any pack, though. And especially like, and then and then doing a couple hours of the deadfall and just like those weird angles, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, like where you're hunched over and this and that puts puts the packs in some interesting places. But we all broke buckles. We all had to tie off straps places. Mm. Um, but man, we made that gamble on the trail and it worked. Thank God it worked. When we hit the we hit that trail and it was like a brand new trail system sign. Cause we had a, we had a couple hours before we hit a trail. We were so far off the trails. And then when we saw that in the meadow and like the, the bolts that are in the sign didn't even have rust on them yet. Oh, and I'm funny. like, Oh buddy, <laughs> like this is labor day. Like this, they did this on labor day weekend. Like we are, we're cruising. Like, <laughs> holy shit. We all laid down in the meadow there for a second. Like, Oh my God, it's going to work. And it was just the cleanest, nicest trail. That's the greatest feeling when you hit those nice Then we trails. came out, I don't know, we came out thousands of feet lower than the original trailhead and like yeah. way off the path. I'm like, Omar, your job is you. I don't like talking to people. I'm an introvert. I can't stand it. I hate talking to strangers. I'm like, Omar, you have to hitch a ride and go get our truck. Somehow this was planned 
before. Yeah, Lorenzo had already, Lorenzo and I had already talked about it, but like <laughs> you know, in case we couldn't hitch a ride, it was still Omar that was going to run. Yeah, which is fair. I yeah. killed it in my hunt. Yeah, yeah it's fair. Goggins, and it Goggins taken him, Jr. <laughs> yeah, it would have taken him an extra hour and a half, two hours to get to the truck. But like we volunteered him to either find a ride or hike to the truck. And him and I were just going to lay there and get fat by the river at the truck. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, did you ever think like Omar's never coming back? Because you, you to describe this town you guys were at earlier. Yeah. It's like very sketchy town. Like yeah. Omar's going to meet some mountain cave troll. We met some very nice gentlemen. From Texas. Okay, they're yeah. nice. That's good. Well, and I remember seeing the truck, and it was yeah. like a older diesel F two fifty, I think. Yeah, F two fifty. And I remember right. like, I remember in my head like stereotyping. I was like, oh, this is my opportunity here. If there's anyone's gonna give me a ride, and I'm coming You're up a true American in blood, stereotyping. <laughs> I'm like, these are the boys. Yeah. And they were they were good solid dudes. That's um, good. So they, I honestly wasn't worried if it was like. Some of the other vehicles we saw, yeah, I'd be very worried. But these guys were, I mean, Super Texas nice. good dudes, like ranch ranch hand kind of guys. Mm. Um, and so he brought the trucks back, and we're like, dude, this is awesome. Get, got out of there. I'm like, okay, cool. This this will be the very short part of the podcast. All right, let's drive. We'll get some food in the town, in the night, that closest town. We'll get some food, eat like some real food. Um, is this the uh, pizza part? No, no, no. Okay. no. Like, let's get some real food, and uh, we'll just bomb to my hunt unit. We, it's really not that far, but the way to get in there, a lot of dirt roads and really shitty roads, it was it was a solid three and a half hours, four hours to yeah, get to. Yeah. But remember sitting in that restaurant where, like, how many people do you think in this restaurant packed the animal out today? Or, like, zero. <laughs> or in the town. <laughs> yeah. Like, that style of pack out. It was, we were just riding this This awesome wild hunt. high. Yeah. We were on such a high with the whole situation. And then the kill footage, too, was, like, that stand where we call this bull in four different times, and it's, like, on film. And it's just beautiful lighting because mm. the sun's back on the other side of the mountain. And it's like this bull screaming and growling, jumping these logs. And like we're all talking about it and watching on this little camera, like watching the kill shot. We're like riding such a high. I'm like, all right, let's just bomb to my unit. We get to my where I wanted to camp at the truck. We, my unit's very different. Roads everywhere. Very broken country. Not like any big place to hunt. Very, very uh, like... 800 to 1,000 foot gain to a ridge, and then 800 to 1,000 foot loss to the bottom. And it's just nice. constant of that. It's like, okay, we just got to find some bugles and call them, and we're, that's what we're thinking. I get to my hunt unit at like 1.30. I'm like, we're going to sleep in, and uh, we'll get our gear situated, you know, get all of our gear dried out from that, pack out everything, get the blood dried out, and we'll start hunting at like 2 in the afternoon. I wake up at eight in the morning and there's a bull right behind our truck bugling his fucking head off like every 30 seconds i'm like dude you guys hear that there's a bull right behind us like now we're riding this high you know what i mean and yeah. i'm like dude he's scouting paid off we're yeah. in the right spot and cam's like hey by the way i had to relieve myself this morning at five in the morning because we just ate real food for the first time in a while and he had his first batch of hatch green chilies from New Mexico. Oh, nice. <laughs> so he had a little rumbly stomach. And he's like, yeah, I was so tired. I wasn't going to tell you, but he was bugling at five this morning. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, bro. Like, Could have got up. <laughs> appreciate it. So anyways, we kind of listened to where he went. And I'm like, cool, that's where we'll go knock off that tonight. Like, that's a big day hunt. But I think we can crush it. If we leave at noon today, like, we'll we can get it done and kind of either kill this bull or get into some elk and mm -hmm. either knock it off the list or baby out there and spike out if there's elk. Do we go out there? Not one bugle. Nothing. Mm -hmm. No elk. We hear one faint oh, yeah. bugle at 430. And it's one of those ones where you're like, oh, cool, they're going to start firing up, right? Like, just heard that bull bugle this morning, 430. Cool, they're going to start firing up. Here we go. Sit down. Listen, listen, nothing, nothing, nothing. Hour goes by, nothing. Like, well, best way to kill a bull sometimes is just eat, mm -hmm. rest. So that's what we did. Nothing. And then finally I'm frustrated. I'm like, that bugle came from that ridge. Let's go. So we go over there. Somehow, by complete happenstance, the bull catches my eye at like 80 yards in the trees. And it's a good bull, like, you know, a little five-point bull. And no, no calling, no bugles, no cows. Nothing. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, do I cow call? Do I, you know, what's yeah. one of those bulls just being dead silent? I end up cow calling, nothing. 
just looks around, Cal calling nothing. He works down into this bottom. We go try to cut him off. Can't cut him off. Um, so loud on there with all the pine needles. And it's like that live timber pine needle stick breaking. Yep, yep. So loud. And it's in these deep canyons. So like everything re- reverberates. And then over the next two and a half days, we did 60 miles of yeah. 50, like high 50s in miles. Yeah. Of you know, 800 for gain, 800 for loss, 800, just making these big loops, no elk, no calling, no nothing. I was about to say, I think you're giving this part of the hunt too much ear yeah. time. I was just it like, was, that's what we led into. I just wanted everyone to think like we thought we were yeah, going to do good. Was, Ouch. It was the most shit elk hunt I've been on. <laughs> no, like no, no, no question. Like these things were just, it was like, it was like still hunting dark timber for mule deer is what it was like. You yeah. just want to poke your eyes out. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, well, this isn't what I'm here for. And, you know, we've been out, I've been out of the office for eight days away from my family, nine days now. Right. Like this is stupid. Oh no, that wasn't that point. Sorry. Sorry. That was, we hunted that for two and a half days and it was just nothing. And then I'm like, you know what? We're at the very West side of this unit. Let's go to the very East side. Maybe it's different in the low country in the desert. Um, you know, maybe it's different. We go over there, no bugling, no nothing. And we did the, I'll let you guys, the, the scrub, I've been talking so much. I'm sure everyone's frustrated <laughs> with me talking, but you can tell them the hike that we did the last day. It was dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. It was just prickly, thick, crap, hot. Um, now I started to understand why sometimes you wear pants. Like mm. we were getting torn up, just getting up there. Get up there, turns out we're right on the edge of the unit, can't even go further. Hear a bull bugling, but out of where we can hunt. So we're like, let's try to drop down to this um, track that in we can see private, on the map. In a private thing, like, can't hunt him, not going to yeah. call him off. So, so, no. so we literally climbed up there just to, sit, like, I, I don't know if we were just... Sit the border. Yeah, we were just starting to slip up, I guess. Like, we should have looked up there and been like, well, we can't do anything once we get up there so mm-hmm. anyway, it was a hell mary we, plan yeah yeah went up there ended up by dropping down to this track back through just all of this thick shit so it was over the backside of a ridge that we couldn't see into and we're like hopefully it's better than the way that we came up nah just as bad it's all that like canopy height scrub brush hmm. my bow is destroyed my pants are destroyed I have, we have, all have cuts all over our hands. Yeah, you guys have cuts everywhere. Very yeah. destroyed, by the way. My pants are very destroyed. Gosh, and, that sounds uh, brutal. Dude, it was it, it was the most dog shit hike. It's not even like the fun physical. It's like the one where you're just you're stuck in scrub brush for hours on end. You can't see 10 feet in front of you because it's all canopy over your head height. Mm-hmm. Everything on you is getting caught in the branches and all this shit. You know, my bow just took an absolute beating. My poor bow. And uh, all of us are beat up, scratched up. Like, we get down to the bottom. This is three days of hunting my unit and hearing three bugles. Yeah, nothing. And, like, not the style that we, like, want to hunt too, right? Like, yeah, we just came off of we could walk 10 miles that way, being, you know, still being this country that we want to be in, walk 10 miles south. Receptive elk. Yeah. This is one of those units. There's so many roads. There's so many roads. Everyone just drives roads and calls. It's yeah. like, so these these bulls, they don't make noise. They bugle one time just to let their cows, you know, whatever, and then they shut up for three, four hours. It's like, yeah. it's just one of those. And so anyways, that, that's after three days of hunting that. Now we've been away from the office and my family for nine days. And I'm like, I made the executive decision like, look, this isn't what I hunt elk for. You know, I'm not trying to get lucky and kill a five-point bull off a road with no pack out. Like, this is not what I'm here for. I don't really give a shit about that. I like calling an elk. I like doing all this stuff. So let's go to town, get some food, and I'm bombing home. Like I'm, yeah. I'm done with this. Yeah. And so we went to Domino's. Yeah, there wasn't much open, so we did a little. <laughs> I saw the pizza. I saw the pizza. You guys were gorging yourselves. Yeah. Oh yeah. No more. Yeah. like it's a rare occasion. Lorenzo's <laughs> eating pizza. I'm like, bro. After a hike like that, I'll eat a fucking piece of cake right now. I don't yeah. give a shit. <laughs> and then uh, meanwhile, uh. I'm trying to call Domino's and like Lorenzo rolls when the Lorenzo Rose's window up and uh, Cam's like, I'm, like, is he in a bad mood or something? I was like, I don't, he's probably just talking to his wife or something like he's fine. And, um, uh, cause he was like, order the pizza, like, uh, and then we'll drive over to Domino's. Like I'm gonna make a phone call, but like he was trying to surprise us. Yeah. I while, did surprise you. Yeah. He's, yeah. He surprised us. 
Kind of, because we didn't, we couldn't get one at that specific time that we. That's in. true. We had to drive a little yeah. bit. I got him a hotel. We I got his hotel room so we could shower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It had been nine days and yeah. we were so, tore up. So we got the Domino's and the was like, "Well, I was trying to surprise you guys, but all the hotels in this town that we're in are booked up. The nearest one is, you know, an hour and a half or whatever it was driving. Me and Cam like." We'll go, we'll go. Like, yeah, shower in a bed, <laughs> let's roll. Yeah, like, let's drive. And he's like, you guys don't mind? He's like, nope, we're down. Um, so, yeah, we drove over there. And, uh, you know, at this point, it's the end of the hunt and everything. And I have this uh, school in the back of the back of my truck. And I'm telling him. He like, was not letting them crackheads get a piece of no. that. And I'm telling him, like, I'm bringing this bull in. I don't think you guys believed me, but. I didn't believe you. Yeah, I was like, I'm bringing this bull into the hotel. Until we actually got out of our trucks and like locked up our stuff, like mine, mine, like gear and everything's in the truck, like in the truck. At this point, you know, hunts over, something gets stolen, I'll just get it, I'll buy something and have it for the next year. But one thing that is coming with me into that hotel is clean clothes and that rack. Yeah. So I'm walking in this hotel, checking in. The guy's like looking at him. I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't even notice the smell because we were sharing a room. And I think I was just so used to stink. All, all my nostrils were destroyed from Lorenzo's feet. <laughs> my feet were so rank. <laughs> Honestly, we could we, we could smell Lorenzo's feet when we were walking five meters behind him. My yeah, feet were rank. Stinky feet, guy. Oh, it was horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. I, we're doing. I want to ask a question. I want. We're doing like the kind of these segments of like go like MVPs, most valuable products. But I kind of want to just ask you on the podcast. If you would like elaborate, what was your most valuable products from the from the hunt? My boots, boots, those Mammut Tice Mid GTX. Yeah, those like, are snazzy. First time I've worn Mammut, and holy shit, I'm in love. And then uh, those Sig Zulus. I think Brady knows those. Are, Bro, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad more people are starting to see the light. The Sig Zulus, for me, I shake like a leaf. Uh, glassing makes me dizzy with all the shaking, yeah. all the. I've used them now on when I killed that buck with my family um, on this hunt. And then I just over the weekend, I was helping my dad on an elk hunt that he had. Also in love, like absolutely in love. Oh, your dad likes them? No, I like them. Yeah. But it's just, dude, they're so handy just having that that locked in, stable view pick up every time, every point. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. And then uh, the approach hoodie, like, I'm biased. I designed it. I don't really give a shit. But that thing is, I mean, I literally use it for everything. Yeah. Did it stink much in the end? Zero. That's insane. That's that's Zero. real good. Didn't stink at all. And and you were wearing that through the every day um, scrub yeah. every day. Yeah. 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 That's that's really impressive yeah. then. <laughs> and it didn't get th- that tore. It didn't get as tore up as my pants did. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Good tough gear. Good, yeah. Good hunt approach. But yeah. That was that was for sure it. But yeah, we we rode such a high into such a low, such a low, and it was good for Omar. It was good for Omar to yeah. see that because it put it in really, perspective. Yeah, it like, does. bro, you just killed a six point bull, a six point bull. Like it ain't a raghorn, it's a six point bull, and called him in. Had the cyclone of rut just swallowed up by it. Yep. And it's like now you see the other side of what elk cunning can be. Yeah, yeah, it was it was good like to experience that. Yeah. And, you know, I think it just brings more appreciation into what we just came off of and not expecting that every September. Yeah. Was, that somehow got lucky and had a... It was a special tag you got. Yeah. It was a very special tag. Yeah. Magic of September. Oh, it was magic. Now it's gone and now I'm already planning next year. Yeah. Crazy. Now it's I'm like, now, now it's like kind of hunting seasons. There's a lot of hunting left. Yeah. It's like you're, we're in research mode again. Yeah, how long how long we've been going? Two thirty. I wanna I wanna make one one point for me, right? It's like it's what I I guess I was the guide mentor. What do you call it in the for the film script? The god. Yeah, not that I was like guiding him by any means, but like I was the um, I guess I was the lead, right? My spot, my yeah, everything. The experience. I've been there before, so I'm trying to tell him all this stuff. I am so goddamn nervous and scared like and i'm not i'm not ashamed to admit i am scared of stone sheep with my bow and it's like such a monumental animal to hunt such a special animal to hunt i don't take it for granted that i have the opportunity to hunt one right Mm -hmm. and so i honestly feel 
I feel more um, unprepared mentally than ever because the the task at hand is so monumental. It is. Yeah. So to go through that with Omar and like see that, and it puts me back in that mindset of like, okay, that you know he's this is the first time he's done it, then he was capable of getting under control, and it's like, all right, like I I got this. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like so I took away from it too, even though. You know, I was the lead or whatever you want to call it. But like, mm. yeah, dude, now I'm I'm pulling from that now going into next week of like, I'm going to be in that situation, hopefully mm-hmm. with a stone sheep at full draw. That's like my week. dream, my dream of an animal to kill with a bow. It's like, it's going to be monumental for me. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I'm I'm taking from Omar. Like he didn't settle his pin that first one and he did punch it. Like I, okay, like I, I got Yeah, this, you're learning you know? a lot too at the yeah. same time, which is really cool. Yeah, it's like that. It has been in my head since that day of like, okay, I just experienced that, like a part of it. And that's going to be me here, and yeah. hopefully, he's been like dreaming about that experience the whole time. Six, seven days. You've been dreaming about this forever. Yeah. You're both learning from each other at the same time, taking tips and tactics, and yeah, now you're getting thrown back in. Yeah, like his process. I'm like, okay, I need to make sure I do that. Mm-hmm. Got to make sure I do that. You know, it's wild. It's crazy how shit works like that. Mm-hmm. I'm I can't wait you. to see the film. Sam, did we film it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got some. We've got some real cool shit. Yeah. And and with any filming, if you put on a good adventure, then it makes for a good film. That's like the basics. You can only do so much with what you've got. So as long as the adventure's good, and your cameraman hits record, then these these guys. Did keep you hit record? Yeah, I was, two I times. Was, yeah. Then, <laughs> Okay. Even after Omar's kill, they were like, "Did you film that?" I was like, "What the fuck do you think I'm here for?" <laughs> of course, I, of course, I filmed it. <laughs> that literally happened to Omar. Goes, "Did you get that?" He's like, "The fuck am I here for?" <laughs> yeah, it's a good cameraman right there. Yeah. Always recording. Cam, cam's yeah. the best. But it is, it is hard. Like, there's one thing. Like the hunter, they can, they can miss, have their fuck ups. That's hunting. If yeah. the cameraman doesn't get the shot, then. Yeah, you know, that's what we said on the mountain like too. The cameraman, the, is, the cameraman is the kicker. Yeah, on a football team, running backs allowed to fumble, quarterbacks allowed to throw an interception. Kicker, do not miss. Yeah, yeah like you kinda, are not allowed to miss. It's kind of true. Yeah, which you know, that pressure's fun. Yeah, and you try to pick your spots, and you try to judge where an animal is going to come in, and you and you do your best. But yeah. you know, for us, this happened to work out pretty well. But yeah, you know, yeah. it's not the reality half the time. We got a few more days too to hang out with Cam. He leaves tomorrow. Cam's a stud. Leaves tomorrow? He leaves tomorrow. Mm. Yep. I got one question for you. Okay. I've been dying to ask this the whole time this podcast. Yeah. From New Zealand, right? Yeah. You ever been to Hobbiton where they filmed the uh, Lord of the Rings? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Lord of Brady the Rings. Jay, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah, I don't, 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 don't talk about it. So I've, I've never been to Why Hobbiton. Not? I'm not that interested in it, um, <laughs> but other locations that we do hunt is uh, are other scenes from Lord of the Rings, and they're fucking beautiful. Like Central Otago, that's all those like rolling tussock hills with the big rocky features, yeah, yeah. stunning there. Um, I I don't know what the castle's called, but you know the castle that's on top of the big mountain that they mm-hmm. run and hide to. It's like We've never big, seen it. Oh, okay, no, no, no. It's definitely not Mordor. Sometimes. It actually does look like Mordor when the sun sets, but um, yeah, no, we do we do hunt near some of the locations from Lord of the Rings. So I, that's I your said, dream. I said, ask. I want to go there eventually. That's your dream. Something now I'm life. thinking about it. He kind of who's the character um, in Lord of the Rings? One of the character, like the main one. Sam. Not one Sam? of the hobbits. I hope. Yeah, one of the hobbits. <laughs> you uh, kind of I, I, I was hoping you could say Legolas or some shit. But. <laughs> I mean, he's cool. Uh, yeah. You're cool. <laughs> I mean, he is short like a hobbit. Oh, he does wow. pack a lot of weight like a hobbit. Does he eat like a hobbit? Like seventeen times a day, having some food? No, no he does eat like a hobbit. Yeah. I the, packed in a shitload of food for him. This was the most I've ever eaten on a hunt. Holy, I've I've, I've definitely learned a thing or two about what to eat on a hunt. That's yeah, cool. and we're like, like we're way more casual back in NZ. It's like buy your salami, buy your cheese, get a wrap, happy days, packet of lollies, and you're pretty much good. Mm-hmm. Lollies or gummies. Okay, I didn't oh, know that. I was yeah, yeah, candy, whatever you call it. Because I, I explained to these not guys. Not lollipops, they're <laughs> <yeah>. candy. It's <laughs> okay. when a hunt sucks, it just sucks. So you, you don't know mm-hmm. if it's because your body hasn't been fed well enough. But on this one, it was amazing to see how much I should actually be eating. Yeah, and he, mm-hmm. I think you understood, like, 
what all these calories mean. And then by the end, like he was like, I dumped my lollies. Like I'm, you know, I'm eating the whole calories that you gave me here. Like, yeah. yeah and I wasn't craving gummy beers. Like my yeah. one request for food was like some gummy beers. So I packed in, like it felt like a kilo, two pounds of, gummy, like it was two big bags of gummy beers, but at no point was I craving them because mm. I was so full on shit that was actually Real good for me. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how that works. Yeah. I'm, you know, I might just go back to gummy beers back in New Zealand, but yeah. <laughs> Unless you guys can see me over some yeah. waffles. Oh yeah, so. he loves the little waffle stingers. Oh yeah, like he honey stingers are so great. He yeah. came over to my house, it's like and crack. He saw them in the pantry, and like he's eating like little, he's like he's eating them here stinger. in the office. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, and, he and in the office, I'm, I'm stealing those. He literally waffles. poked his head into Porter's office. And he goes, "Hey, uh, what's the deal with the the wall, the 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 little packets of wafers back there?" I like to eat them <laughs> for hunts only. <laughs> been eating those at the office. You're eating all of them. I'm, I'm proud of you for expanding your horizons and learning some great new backpacking. Food. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we'll run it back again next year. Yeah. So, that was, anyways, sorry for talking so much. That was, but oh well. <laughs> you guys, no, it sounds like guys. a fun hunt. You guys just learned a lot. Had a crazy adventure, like you said. You had a shit ton of memories in a short period of oh, time was awesome. because you put yourself in cool place. Yeah. yeah. All I can think about now is, I want to be back. But I gotta wait a whole nother 365 days to Is make it happen again. Yeah. And and if some Kiwis end up by listening to this, like, yeah, American hunters do it. True. Because mm. like you. we've got we've got Appreciate a that. bad bad USA. perspective of like American hunters back home, and then just coming back doing a trip like this was like, yeah, it's the real deal shit over here. Mm, we like to hear that. I always look at them thinking the same thing. So, yeah. dude, it's the real deal <laughs> shit over there for yeah. sure. Yeah, and and capturing struggle that's that's always hard because when you're struggling, the last thing you want to do is pull out a, a exactly. camera or even your iPhone, film all the shit parts. You know, like yeah. stick it in someone's face too, and they're on the downside because they just you know missed yeah. the ball. Yeah, and, like understandably, we usually show the best parts of a hunt, which mm-hmm. is like once you got an animal down or you're in a real cool location, but you don't see all the struggles. So come over yeah. here and actually sweat it through then yeah mm-hmm. yeah he he sorry one, one more thing we've tried in this thing like four times now but he goes uh you know that that other film you guys did on this hunt you made it look way too easy <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is way harder than what that film shows i was like yeah yeah dude it's hard to make a film show yeah what really it is, you know? through the burn like if you go back and watch it just understand that it's fucking tough getting in there mm-hmm. like, i think you guys dedicate like five shots where you're looking happy cruise past the camera that was not the reality. So that, that's why I like these podcasts that are talking about, you know, the, the truth of it. Hunt yeah. film. Like there's a lot that you just can't capture or it's hard to show, hard to show the struggle, but you can hear it through you guys' voices, like the pain, what you went through, emotional roller coaster, like yeah. all that. And that makes it, it's, it's a hunt. And Rob. through and, and through print. Yeah. You got to believe I'm plugging the magazine. So. <laughs> yeah. Hunter's yeah. Journal. Yeah. yeah there's plug the one. It. Honestly, I, I genuinely think it's the best hunting magazine that has come out on this planet. It's, it's it's core, but it's beautiful. Like we design stuff well. The paper is phenomenal. You've got to hold it. The imagery is incredible. The way that people tell stories is great. But there's a lot of dead shit in there. So, what kind of publication is it? How often? So we generally do it quarterly. This year we've done two. Just been under the pump. But yeah, generally four a year. And it's like uh, I think it's 128 pages. Of just the Dude, that's beautiful map. How does paper. somebody find Hunter's Journal or subscribe to it? Uh, just jump on the website. So we don't do subscriptions to um, the US just because of postage. So you can order them one off or order them in bulk. Um, um, but then just for the day to day sort of shit that we do or the highlights, then Instagram, that's the. Worth the check out. Yeah, that's Hunter's the best Journal. way to keep on top of it. Yeah. And that's if, the Hunter's Journal. Yeah. And if you're lucky, we'll add you to our close friends and then you can see the real. The real behind shit. the scenes. Love it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I, well, I got a few plugs we got we to do as okay. well. So we're talking about right now, it's the end of September. We're talking about doing some research already. It's crazy to think that. So you still is a lot of time right now. Like Omar's probably going to start researching some elk hunts for next year. Jump on over. Get yourself an insider membership. Use promo code podcast, as everyone should know. Use promo code podcast. You're going to get 50 points back to the Go Hunt Gear Shop. That's 50 bucks you can turn around and spend on and buy some gear. And you can use Go Hunt Maps. I know you guys just released a great maps tip the other day. How you're like locating bugles and using the rangefinder tool oh, yeah. to drop bugles. Like that's a use case I never thought of before. Mm-hmm. That's really sweet about using Go Hunt Maps in the field while you're hunting. Here's some bugles. Figure out distance, probably those elk are. Mark that. 
Now you have a plan of attack. It's yep. pretty cool. So there's still a lot it of hunting. really well for us on that. Yeah, there's still a lot of hunting opportunities. We have a lot of like leftover tag stuff still, and you got some other opportunities coming up that you need to do some research. So start diving in Insider. Check out Go Hunt Maps. Use it in the field this season. And also, September 30th is the deadline for the Mexico's Ooh. giveaway. Going to Mexico, boys. I love <laughs> I've been, that video. I've been dig- I, I got back from my moose hunt, and I saw that one ad of Omar wearing the long hair. Mm-hmm. That was a gem. That's a great one. <laughs> I'm so glad we, we did that one. Cam was on Instagram. We had just got back into service, and he's like, the first time my time is you in a wig. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I as know soon, as soon as I opened my fire, I saw that. A great, like, that's a great one. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, I'm telling you, this hunt, this hunt's incredible. I can't wait. So whoever wins it, buckle up, man. Get ready. How yeah, do how do people enter into that? Hunt? Yeah, so you have until September 30th. So by the time this podcast goes out, you have a couple days. But hey, you sign up for Go Hunt Insider membership, you get 150 points. Every dollar you spend in the Go Hunt Gear Shop is one entry. You sign up for Outdoor Class, you get 100 entries. So use promo code Podcast, get that 50 bucks. You're also going to get 150 entries. Win-win. All current insiders also getting 150 entries, yep. I believe. So it's, yeah. it's an and awesome opportunity. Go to Mexico. Hunt with the Go Hunt crew. Having a great time. And you'll fly me back over when I win? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, perfect. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So there's a, there's a lot of cool stuff going on right now. We have a lot of cool things in the works. And yeah, I can't wait to check out this film. It'll be a good one. I'm excited. It's cool. It'll be, it's going to be weird. It's the other thing. This lucky shithead not only kills his first big game animal, <laughs> but he also has it on film. Like, yeah, how special is how that? How cool is that? I'm, I'm, cool. I'm literally pinching myself. It's so it's like, awesome. I, I honestly, I don't want to make this more longer, but like, call my mom. You know, my mom's always worrying about me. I'm literally moved, ditched my family. Not not ditched, but like, you know, decided to, to change, leave my, family, change yeah. my career, you know, similar to what you did yep. years ago. Um, to ch- you know, do what I want to do. Um, and I call my mom. And she's like, "How you doing?" I'm like, "Good." She's like, "No, like, tell me how you're actually doing." I'm like, "Mom, I am living my dream right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I have an amazing opportunity that I, you know, am so lucky to be like the one to, you know, do this." And like, you know, it's mom. I'm fine. It's just just checking up on you. Like, God is good, and I'm having a good time. Guy's so. stoic, even even his mom knows. Yeah. <laughs> He's not telling his full feelings. Yeah. I mean, we have some other really cool things too coming up, and uh, we have a big maps release. We're we do have a here. big maps release. Yep. So stay tuned for that. Yes. It's going to be some big updates on the mobile app. Yep. You guys are going to want to check it out. We've been testing it, using it. It's badass. We it's might awesome. have hinted it before, but it's baller, as you would say. Yeah. Baller. Straight baller. Straight baller. Straight baller. <laughs> so yeah, I appreciate you guys, Cam. What a legend. Thanks, Ham. I'm kind of sad I haven't been getting hung with you. We'll have to do it again. Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely going to run yeah, back. we'll make that happen. Yeah. You bunch of <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll have to bleep that one out. <laughs> no, you can, they can say that over that's there. A, that's the one where we don't leave through the line. It's no, a, you, a, they can say a that positive connotation right there, but yeah. I, thought, I thought I'd just give us an excuse to end it. Okay, so that's yeah. good. <laughs> Since you guys are struggling. All, All right. right. We See out. Everybody.